having me. My name is Adrian Mangum, and I'm representing myself. I'm here to speak for HB 9896. This bill calls to end the murder of 55,000 children every year in this state. This bill calls to end the Texan Holocaust. Mm -hmm. HB 896 is different from many other pro-life bills in that it does not regulate abortion. It outlaws it, like the murder that it is. Just a couple months ago, 75,000 Texans signed a petition called Jeremiah's Wish. It was a petition to Governor Abbott to oversee the abolition of abortion. Those 70,000 75,000 people want to see this genocide end. Aside from the fear of man, the word of God says, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. And the blood of thousands of murdered children will be on your hands if you do nothing. This is your chance. If you act now, Texas will act with you. Fear God, not man, and give HB 896 a vote. And this wasn't in my original script. Uh, those smiles, I appreciate your smiles, but they're meaningless unless this goes to a vote, and unless that vote is successful. Thank you, Adrian. Any questions? No, I appreciate you being here. Joel Garcia. Oh, hello, committee. Glad to have y'all here, and I uh, really appreciate y'all listening to everybody today. Been here most of the day, standing back here listening and uh, catching all this stuff, it's kind of new to me. Uh, I'm in favor of this bill. I'm from Morgan, Texas. I'm a native Texan. I'm a father, a grandfather, and a follower of Jesus Christ. Is in your name? Oh, Doel Garcia. All right. Thank yeah. you. Um, the reason I think abortion should be abolished is because it, hurt, it hurts women and it hurts families. There's no good that comes from abortion. It should be abolished because it's the murder of an innocent, completely defenseless human being. Maybe when Roe v. Wade was decided back in 1973, I just started high school, they didn't know what abortion was. Maybe then they thought that it was just a clump of cells. But scientific advancement and technology has long since proven that, it is, that that is not true, and modern ultrasounds clearly show that even as early as eight weeks, that a human baby is growing inside his mother. What kind of society allows its most innocent, vulnerable members to be executed because someone decides they are an inconvenience. Thank you. Thank you, Joel, and I, I appreciate all your patience. I know you've been standing around a lot today, uh, but thank you for being here. Any questions? All right, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Uh, so the chair will call it now Tom Hoefling, Abigail Barreras, Timothy Miller, and Sandra Carney. And then on deck, we have Paul Juarez, Andy Pryor, Katrin Young and Amy Hedke. All right. So let's start with Abigail. All right. All right. Hello, my name is Abby Barreras, and I'm here today to speak in support of HB 896. And, and you represent yourself. I represent myself. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. I'm here as a living proof that there are real dangers in our current legal stance on abortion. When my parents weren't in for the ultrasound, the doctor said that I had many chromosomal defects. Because my parents are pro-life, they decided that I was worth keeping. The day of the next ultrasound, my parents entered the room prepared for the worst. But instead, the tech began to cry out, this is not the same baby. Every chromosome defect was gone. Mm. Women have now... Women now have the option at nine weeks to choose whether to carry the child with the defect or not. It is a very slippery slope when we can choose to be selective about things like the health of the child or the gender or even the race. This is eugenics. And eugenics has not one thing to do with choice. In the name of offering freedom, we are now not only to deny the baby human their God-given and constitutionally granted basic right to life, we are being dangerously selective about who lives and who dies, their race, their gender, their quality of life. Thank you, Abby. It's a great testimony. Uh, any questions? No, thank you for being here. Really appreciate you. Uh, next, the chair will call Sandra Carney. So tell us who you are, your position on the bill, and who you represent. Okay. Hello, my name is Sandra Carney, and I'm representing myself. I'm testifying for HB 986. 
As a mother of four, two of whom I was encouraged to abort, my first child due to getting pregnant at 17 years old and being unmarried, the thought of aborting her disgusted me and I knew it was wrong and I couldn't live with myself. Today, I'm a grandmother of two precious boys because of her life. My third pregnancy, I was told that my daughter had trisomy 18, which means that she would probably die shortly after birth. By now, I had been a follower of Christ, and I knew it wasn't my decision because her life had value and that it was not mine to take. That was a difficult, challenging time, and I yielded to God and surrendered to him that whatever would happen, I would praise him regardless. He healed her. Today, she's a 17-year-old, strong-willed abolitionist. We are 46 years of allowing the murder of over 60 million innocent children, and we say we don't want women prosecuted. We should be saying mothers because the moment we become pregnant, we are mothers. We aren't and shouldn't be a special class of people. We say we want equality, but yet we want to be the only class that's allowed to murder our own children. How can we say that we know it's murder and then say that it's okay if a certain class of society does it? We must learn to be consistent in what we say. As magistrates, 1 Peter 2, 13 through 14 says, you are sent by God to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. So be bold and courageous. I've come to the Capitol almost weekly for the past several months and I've heard that spoken many times. But we must remember to be bold and courageous. We are first told to obey God's instruction to be successful. Obedience to God's word leads to freedom and disobedience leads to slavery. I ask you to rise up. It started in Texas by a court opinion. Let us end it in Texas with righteous legislation. Thank you for giving this bill a hearing, and I hope you support it in its entirety. Thank you, Sandra. And I, I do want to point out, Representative Hugh Shine uh, is here with us today, and I believe yes, he is your representative. Yes, he is my representative. So I want to make sure we recognize him. Uh, representative Swanson has also joined us tonight uh, again, so thank you for being here, Representative Swanson. Thank you, Sandra. Any questions? No, I appreciate the sentiments. Uh, and last, I think we have uh, Tim Hopefully. Tom. Tom. I'm, I apologize. Tom. Sorry. Thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, again, I'm Tom Hoefling, Equal Protection for Posterity, and I drove a thousand miles to be here yeah. to tell you that I support this bill. Mm -hmm. Why, you might ask? Uh, because what you do here in Texas affects the whole country. It was bad Texas legislating that gave us Roe v. Wade in the first place. The 1961 ta uh, Texas statute that was cited in Roe uh, failed to provide equal protection for the unborn child. Uh, jail time for the, or the abortionist was only two to five years, and the mother who hired the hitman to murder her child was let completely off the hook. That's why the Roe court used this statute to claim that the unborn child is not human. If Texas won't treat babies as human, why should the courts do so? That's exactly what Blackman argued in Roe, in fact. But you didn't swear an oath to obey judges. We don't live in a judicial oligarchy. We live in a constitutional representative republic. The folks in this room should know that better than anybody. You swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution, a Constitution that in the 14th Amendment absolutely requires every state in the union to provide equal protection for every person. It's not optional. Uh, the ultimate stated purpose of our Constitution is to secure the blessings of liberty to posterity. Our founders put our rights on the same plane as their own. How can we do any less for our posterity, our children, our grandchildren? Look, look around this room. You have to be very hard-hearted to ignore what's going on in this room. The moral power that is being shown in this room is remarkable today. I've been in politics for 30 years, and this is one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen. Uh, you have to be less than a patriot to ignore the constitutional arguments against allowing this holocaust, this genocide to continue. Things are changing. Look, look, this is Texas. These are Texas Republicans. You know, look, I hope you do the right thing on a moral basis, on a constitutional basis, but if nothing else, do it on the basis of your own self-interest. You're going to be buried by abolitionism, pro-lifeism, regulationism is dead. Okay, you're seeing the death of regulationism in this room right now. That's what you're seeing. So I, I urge you, pay no attention to the court, pay no attention to your colleagues, vote to uphold your sacred oath that you made to God and not to anybody else and provide equal protection for every person. Thank you. Thank you, Tom.
Um, I appreciate it. it. looks like you're from Iowa, so thank you for making that uh, drive. Uh, hey, any questions? No. Thank you all very much for being here uh, tonight. Okay, the chair next will call uh, Paul Juarez, Andy Pryor, Katrin Young, and Amy Hedke. On deck, we have Karen Udy, Tammy Pierce, Thomas Udy, and Ray Williams. I'm guessing you're Katrin. All right. Thank you for being here. If you will tell us who you are, your position on the bill, and who you represent. Hi, my name is Katrin Young. I am testifying in support of HBA 896. I'm representing myself. Yesterday, April 7th, is the anniversary of my abortion. I was a 19-year-old college student and scared when I found that I was pregnant. Women who choose abortion are not heartless or terrified and were deceived. I bought into the lie that abortion is the easy way out. The fear I faced with an unplanned pregnancy was replaced with sorrow, grief, and self-loathing. It honestly felt like I had ripped my own heart out of my chest, like God couldn't possibly love me after what I had done, and that I didn't deserve anything good in my life after that decision. I spent the next four years of my life in self-destruct mode, and through that behavior, I became pregnant again. This time, I chose life, and I overcame the fear of being a single mother and found joy in sacrificing my plans for my child. I knew in my heart that taking my child's life was wrong and no law passed by the government covered my guilt. The government may be able to legally justify a person's actions, but it cannot offer forgiveness, mercy, grace, or redemption to a heart grieved by shame and regret. Government was never meant to pardon sin. Only Jesus Christ through his death on the cross has the power to pardon sin. Romans 5, 8 says, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. The abolition of abortion will put that power of pardon back into the hands of our Creator. As a post-abortive woman, I have the power through Christ to come alongside other women and help mend the hurts caused by abortion. But as lawmakers, you have the incredible opportunity to end those hurts completely. Please vote in favor of HB 896. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Any questions? No? Andy, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Representative Krause. Good to see you. Thanks for being here tonight. You'll tell us who you are, who you represent, and uh, your position on the bill. Absolutely. My name is Andy Cryer, and I'm co-founder of Equal Protection and Posterity Texas. I'm here testifying in favor of 896, HB 896 S5. We would not be here today if your predecessors had done their job and provided equal protection for all. From the beginning of statehood, the Texas legislature has always failed in its most basic function of providing equal protection. HB 896 starts Texas on the road to equal protection for the first time in our state's history. The Texas abortion codes were essentially unchanged since the very first penal code was codified into law by the state legislature of Texas in 1856. Texas has always provided exceptions under the law from the very beginning of our statehood. Roe didn't create those exceptions. Roe simply said the exceptions were invalid, the exceptions were or remain invalid, but not for the reasons of the Blackman Court in Roe. Equal protection under the law and constitution demand that the law apply equal to everyone. In addition to this bill, we must also amend the Texas Constitution, which remains it, maintains an artifact of slavery in its current form. And I've included some information about that in my written testimony as well. Thank you, Andy. Any questions? Mr. Parr? Thank you again. Next to Chair will call Amy Hedke. Hi guys, Amy Hedke, representing myself for this bill. Women are being lied to, lied to by abortion doctors, abusive partners, and the state of Texas. All of you except that I'm old football coach are attorneys and well aware that existing law already address mitigating factors in murder investigations. Your tactics in questioning people on those are disingenuous at best. I spent 30 days in the county jail last year and got to speak to a lot of women in my tank being behind bars is not the worst barrier to therapy. You know what is? People who lie to you that what you did should be legal. And I agree with Representative Nayabe that women should not be subject to capital punishment. I am anti-death penalty for everyone from womb to tomb. 
but I'm not going to let the state's bad actions on the death penalty sanction and exempt a crime that is just as heinous. I have testified against the death penalty in this capital before and I'll likely do it again. You want to help women? Stop lying to them. We can't catch all the bad guys, but you can stop being one of the bad guys. Let this bill have a vote in committee. Let it get to the floor and let the conversation continue. Thank you, Amy. Any questions? I no, appreciate y'all being here and sticking it out tonight. Really do. All right, next we are going to have, and uh, Tom, uh, Chairman Leach earlier had asked that those two seats be reserved for whoever's kind of on deck, and I want to uh, honor his uh, wishes. Thank y'all very much. Uh, next, uh, the chair would like to call up uh, Karen Udy, Tammy Pierce, Thomas Udy, and Ray Williams. And then on deck, we have uh, Dave Robbins, Robert Wood, Todd Bullis, and Hannah Heideman. All right, let's have Karen Udy go first. Thank you. Thank you all for being here and staying late here. Karen Udy, representing myself for. HB 896, without exception. A Dallas abortionist has said, he's been quoted as saying, am I killing? Yes, I am. I know that. End quote. To defend abortion, unborn babies are dehumanized and devalued. Telling women they must kill their babies to, to be equal in this society is barbaric. Or to say they can kill their babies without consequences is equally barbaric. A woman can only be convicted of a capital crime if she can, commits a capital crime. You are sworn to protect Texas citizens. We are supposed to trust our judicial system to judge justly with the laws already on the book incorporated in this bill. And justice is supposed to be blind when it's implemented. We know abortion kills, and we know killing is wrong. Please choose life. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Any questions? All right, thank you. Uh, next we'll go, I'm assuming your husband, uh, Thomas. Yeah, we're related. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Jim. My name is Tom Moody. I'm 4HB 896. Uh, my granddaughter... And you're representing yourself? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm thank my granddaughter, Iris, was born at 26 weeks. She weighed 2.1 pounds. Uh, we flew out from California to see her. Uh, it was the spur of the moment. And uh, when I walked in to see her in the incubator, uh, it was horrible. Uh, she was less than the size of my hand. Her legs were like my fingers. And she had... Uh, uh, a feeding tube and oxygen in her nose and a clamp around her little ankles for a heartbeat and, and oxygen for her blood and all that. But, but she had to be life flighted for an operation to save her life. Uh, she also had to have a lot of 24 hour life saving care in, in the incubator, as I said, in, in ICU. Because of this, some would say her life was not viable outside the womb. Her care was hard expensive and time consuming. Now, today, she is a happy, healthy four-year-old who plays soccer and is, is the light of our lives. She says, Grandpa, I love you. And I say, why is, why Iris? And she says, because you are special to me. And I say, Iris, I love you. And she says, why Grandpa? And I say, because you're special to me. Please vote yes on this bill. So the future innocent baby uh, Texans can say to you that you are special to them. I bet Iris isn't spoiled at all, is she? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, she really is some. I mean, she just is precious. I bet she is. Any questions? No, thank you for your testimony. All right. Uh, Tammy Pierce, can you tell us who you are? Sorry. I'm Tammy Pierce. I'm a Texas resident since birth. I'm a wife. I'm a mother of two, and I'm a grandmother of seven. And I am speaking for House Bill 896 without exceptions. And 
and representing yourself. And representing myself. Representatives, Hitler successfully depersonalized humans who he considered biologically inferior and was therefore able to legally exterminate over six million Jews and other innocent people. And our country fought a war to stop that atrocity. <laughs> Depersonalization is defined as the action of divesting someone of human characteristics or individuality. For 43 years, Roe versus Wade has depersonalized humans living in the womb, resulting in the extermination of over 60 million people, while the sale of their butchered body parts have become a lucrative industry and the blood of this Holocaust flows through the drains of Houston, Dallas, Austin, and every other city in Texas. I call on you, our legislators, to use the opportunity of HB 896, crafted by courageous representative Tony Tenderholt, to take this courageous first step in truly ending this scourge, this embarrassment, this clear and present evil of child murder called abortion in our beloved state of Texas. Thank you, Tammy. Appreciate that. Any questions? Members? No. Uh, Ray Williams? Yeah. yeah, my name is Ray Williams. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying for this bill. I'm in favor of it. I thank you guys. And I'm asking you guys to please support it. Um, this has to end somewhere, and I hope it will end in Texas. This has been going on for 40 years now. Um, over 40 years, over 60 million babies slaughtered. And we've been told for 40 years that the way to end us is we need the Supreme Court to tell us, uh, oops, we messed up. But the Supreme Court never had a right to tell us that we have a constitutional right to murder babies. We all have God's law written on our heart. We know that it is wrong to murder our babies and anyone else, we know this. And we don't need the Supreme Court to tell us this. And the only way this is ever gonna stop is if somebody, if some state, and I wish to God it would be Texas, would stand up and say, no, it's gonna end in Texas and it needs to end now, you know? And that's my plea, and I'm asking you guys respectfully, please give this bill a chance, and let's put an end to abortion now in Texas. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate that respectful plea. Any questions for the witness? No, thank you all, all for being here and sticking it out tonight to be here. All right, next up we have Dave Robbins, Robert Wood, Todd Bullis, and Hannah Heideman. Next up uh, on deck we'll have Jill Robbins, Marcus Apodaca, Anna Lerma, and Luther Barnett. Anna, we'll have you go first. Hi, my name is Anna Heideman. Um, I'm representing myself. I'm from Lockhart, Texas, um, and I'm going to be speaking in favor of House Bill 896. Um, this is why I'm speaking in favor of it, because abortion is actually, it's not it's not limited to being just a political issue or even a religious issue. This is a moral issue that we're talking about. This is a fight for the right to life. Let's step back and look at the big picture. A friend once asked me, actually just like a month or two ago, um, we were talking about World War II, and she said, how could anyone ever support a man like Hitler and approve of the hate and death of innocence? My reply was, by demoralizing, dismembering and degrading the sanctity of life. Because first something is tolerated, then it is accepted, and then it is done. Abortion is no different. We are taking away the right to life and equality of that child. Please let us uncover our eyes and see that these babies are people just like you and me with real audible heartbeats, growth, and ability to feel pain. The dictionary defines life as the condition that distinguishes animals and plants from inorganic matter, including the capacity for growth, 
reproduction, functional activity, and continual change preceding death. In closing, I would also like you to think of it this way. Abortion is progressing. At one point, it was just before a heartbeat. Then it was before a second trimester, and now it is infanticide. Mm -hmm. In some states, like New York, where does it end? Will we end life based on age, on race, on medical conditions, based on faith, or even just because? If we cannot stop the genocide of the innocent, how far will it go? God created each of us out of love and with a purpose, each of us with a right to life that only God can take. Please end this modern holocaust and abolish abortion, and I urge you to take this bill to vote. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Any questions? No, thank you for that testimony. Uh, Mr. Robbins, let's have you go ahead. Again, I'll note your representative, uh, Representative Shine, is, is here with us today. Yes. My name is Dave Robbins. I'm representing myself, and I'm for this bill. Thank you. Let's face it, the reasons for most abortions is because a woman doesn't want to be uncomfortable for nine months, or she doesn't want, or she doesn't want to be stuck with a baby, as Barack Obama said. Uh, does a woman's discomfort give her an excuse to kill a living being? If it is growing inside her, it is a living, growing thing. It is alive. If you let it grow, it becomes the most beautiful, wonderful creation God ever made. It is not a clump of cells, it is a baby. God says in Proverbs 16, 7, I hate the shedding of innocent blood. There is no more innocent blood than a baby, born or unborn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robbins. Questions? All right, thank you. Robert? All right, Robert Wood. Uh, Robert Wood out of Benford. I represent myself and a family of five. Um, and I'm here in favor of HB 896. Thank you. Um, so, kind of listening to you tonight, a lot of what I'm picking up from folks is hey, uh, I had a cool prepared thing, I'm getting rid of it. Um, the idea being hey, we're coming up on two challenges in legal sense to say hey, how do we know we're making a situation better by passing this? Uh, the first one, the severity of the penalty for the mother. How do we know that what we're doing doesn't make it worse for the woman? Two, what do we do about forced abortions? So I want to kind of address that in two ways. First, the death penalty. We have a system that's based on juries making decisions. That means that if a woman comes before a trial and the jury doesn't buy it, the jury doesn't finish the prosecution, she's able to walk. So there's a safety valve in our system built into that. It's an additional safety valve that's prosecutorial discretion discretion, the prosecutor doesn't have to prosecute to the full extent, he can do something different. So in our case, uh, section 19 of the penal code, section 4, a manslaughter application can actually be used, uh, as opposed to a full murder or homicide charge. So there's safety valves built into the law that tenderhold is put in place for this to function correctly. Um, second, what do we do about forced abortions? Uh, already addressed equal protection under the law, the woman now has protection against coercion, against her will. Second to that is penal code 22, section 1A3, and that's going to qualify section 221B6, which is actually verbatim that a pregnant individual is assaulted if she is forced to have an abortion. There's already a provision in law for somebody forcing women to have an abortion. That's irrelevant to the discussion of this bill in front of us. Um, beyond that, you go know, farther down to Penal Code 22, sexual, sexual assault provisions actually apply to a lot of what abortion involves. And so there's double layer protection for a prosecutor to work with for a man who is behaving in a very reprehensible fashion with, uh, with a lady. Um, so guys, I encourage you to fight for women. 31 million killed. That's a lot. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Wood? No, thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it. All right, next. All right, Jill Robbins, Marcus Apodaca, Anna Lerma, and Luther Barnett. And then on, uh, on deck, we have Cassandra Weaver, Noah Apodaca, Aaron Scarborough, and Terry Tope. All right. You must be Jill. All right, if you would go ahead. Tell us who you are, your position on the bill, and who you represent. Yes. And Representative Shine, I appreciate you coming in. My name is Jill Robbins, I represent myself, and I'm in favor of House Bill 896. 
Um, I want to remind everybody here we started out the afternoon seeking justice for victims. It, I'd like to continue to beseech you for justice for another group of victims. Abortion hurts everyone and everything it touches, and is, it has hardened the hearts of our whole nation. Motherhood is foundational for society's existence, but abortion, codified into law, has managed to convey the message to countless women that motherhood is a curse to be avoided and gives them the right to abandon their children to a butcher for slaughter for the sake of their own convenience. It has not empowered women, but instead has debased us, degraded us, and brought on us more abuse and exploitation by evil men. Abortion has opened wide the door for men to use women for sexual pleasure without taking responsibility for or making commitments to those they impregnate or the children they father. Because of the disregard for life overall, children are born into a society where they are not always valued and therefore we see more physical, sexual, and sex trafficking abuse. Our young people are being seduced with sex education in our public schools and are being led to believe it is their right to explore with numerous sexual partners, making them targets for sex trafficking and victims of a myriad of sexually transmitted diseases. They are also watching the adults around them advocate for and practice abortion in their own laws, teaching them that life has no value, their own or anyone else's, and that survival of the fittest is their destiny. But most profoundly, abortion hurts the preborn, the ultimate victims of this evil practice, depriving them of very life itself, of being loved and cherished, of enjoying friends and pursuing dreams, of experiencing love and marriage and having their own children to love and cherish. They are the ones we are here for. Yes, abortion has hurt us. Sin always has its consequences. We allowed ourselves to believe this was our right and for our benefit both lies but we are not here on our own account we are here for those who had and continue to have no voice we want you our lawmakers to establish justice equal justice in the land and house bill 896 is the only pro-life bill that establishes equal justice please vote it out of committee thank you thank you mrs robbins any questions no thank you marcus all right you're up next I just want to thank the committee for staying up this late. You know, it's pretty good. Day, so thank you. Um, my name is Marco Zapalaga. I'm a Texan. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying for HB 896. Abortion is a symptom of a plague called sin that affects every human being worldwide. Sin bears fruit of evil thoughts, sexual morality, theft, murder, and abortion. We are in no way absolutely positive by passing a law such as HB 896 that the sin of abortion will be eradicated from our land. And yet, we stand for HB 896 because it is the right thing to do. Our penal code acknowledges life from conception. It assigns personhood to the unique DNA that has been conceived in the womb. The problem is, as we've already heard, our penal code also gives the right to a mother to kill her child without any repercussions. Abortion murders the life of a unique DNA. Abortion is the death penalty for a life that has done nothing wrong. It is your sworn duty to protect the lives and citizens of the great state of Texas. This is your opportunity. We must seize it. HB 896 ends abortion and criminalizes it, providing equal protection for the unborn child. Listen to your conscience. Save millions by doing what is right. Be bold and courageous. We're praying for you all. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. I appreciate that. Any questions? Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, the next panel we have is Cassandra Weaver, Noah Apodaca, Aaron Scarborough, and Terry Tope. On deck we have Vanessa Liao, Nathan Elawayana, yeah, Nathan <laughs> Elawenya, uh, hope you're here and hearing me and getting that name, Jonathan Murdoch, and Jennifer Madrid. Uh, and just as uh, Chairman Leach had, had implored earlier, if you hear the double beat during your testimony, please uh, pretty much uh, wrap it up there. We still have over 200 witnesses for this evening. We know you have very good points to make, but a lot of other people do too. So when you hear those two beeps, I'm going to start being pretty good about saying thank you very much and we're going to move on. So please don't take it rude or disrespectful. We just want to hear from as many people as possible. Uh, Cassandra? Hi, I'm Cassandra Weaver. 
I'm a precinct chair, um, Republican precinct chair in 2030 here in Texas. And I have um, honestly been pro-life since I know the moment I became pro-life, I was in the fourth grade. So I remember very clearly why I'm pro-life. I want to share, um, I've rewritten what I was going to say like eight times today. So let me just say that the biggest reason why it is completely appropriate to criminalize women that have abortions is you are teaching them what is right and wrong. That is what our law is supposed to do. And as long as our law says it's okay you kill your baby, then they go in having an abortion thinking that it is okay. If it's murder and they know it's called murder, then they have to think about it. Then they will, st many, many, many will stop because of that. And we will not be prosecuting all the women in America or in Texas. We will just be prosecuting those that rebel against the law. Thank you, Cassandra. I just want to make sure you are for the bill. For the bill. You're representing yourself. Representing myself, and my husband texted me to make sure I was saying him as well. <laughs> you just registered for yourself, so are you okay just being for yourself? Okay. Perfect. Um, the last thing I want to say is that I had no comprehension of any conversation that there was any such difference between pro-life or abolitionist until about nine months ago. And I will tell you that from the voters that I talked to and worked with, they don't know the difference. And for everyone who thinks they're going to vote against this because the um, Texas right to life or that will be protected by some umbrella of, um, of following the Texas right to life, that the voters do not know the difference. And they think that you've come into this office because you are trying to end abortion. That's what the voters in Texas think they put you in office for. For anyone who thinks that that's not what they want. Yeah. Okay, thank you, uh, Cassandra. We appreciate that. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, next, Noah. Let's have you go, my man. Hello, my name is Noah Bulaka. I'm a Texan. I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for HB 896. Well done. Good job, man. In the Bible, God said, let us make man in our own image. So God created man in his own image. <clears throat> so we are all equal from the moment we were conceived in the womb to the moment we take our last breath. You were a baby once. Your mother didn't abort you. Wouldn't you like to stop other mothers from aborting their babies? Maybe the Lord had you born for this specific purpose to help yeah, stop abortion from the state of Texas. Acts 17.26 says, He has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. Do you care that about the thousands of babies dying every year? If so, help us abolish abortion in Texas. By supporting this bill, you show that you care for the lives of the unborn. And by doing this, people might want to vote more for you because you care about the lives of the unborn. Thank you, Noah. Very well said. Old Testament and New Testament. <laughs> well done. Any questions for Noah? No. Very well done. All right, next, Aaron. Okay, we more Terry. Terry. Terry, all right. Yes. Terry, great to have you here. Thank you. Proceed. I'm Terry Dope, and uh, I'm speaking on behalf of myself and in support of the House Bill 896, and I thank you guys for all the time that you spent on this whole issue today. Uh, in recent months, uh, I've watched as abortion leaders and proponents have cheered laws that have been passed in states that are allowing abortion right up to the point of death uh, of the birth of the child. And I've heard others who are speaking even of wanting to allow a choice to to kill that baby after it's born. It's clear that it's very difficult to know where this is going to end if we don't do something to stop it. Some argue that this is a complicated matter, but the truth is it's not. If I choose to go out and voluntarily kill another human being, we all would say it's murder. Today, every field of medical science validates that from the moment an egg unites with, an, with a sperm, a distinct, identifiable human life is formed. Yet because that human being is inside a woman's womb, we complicate the matter by saying that she has an absolute and unquestionable right to choose what she does with her body and to that innocent baby. 
Uh, some may take issue that this bill imposes consequences on those who would choose to violate it. I would say that without consequences, there is no enforceability. At some point, we as a people have to stand up for common decency, compassion, for innocent lives Thank you. that we are continuing to be subjected to cruel death. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate you being here. Any questions? No? Thank you all, all for being here. Really appreciate it. Great job, Noah. All. all right, next we have Vanessa Leal, Nathan, okay, Jonathan Murdoch, and Jennifer Madrid. And then on deck we have Vicki DeFord, Amanda Stagg, John Speed, and Jim Davis. All right, Vanessa? No, Jennifer? All right, let's have you go first. Tell us who you are, your position on the bill, and uh, who you represent. Okay, my name is Jennifer Madrid. I am representing myself, and I am for the bill HB 896. I am a rape survivor and have been waiting 30 years to have this opportunity to support a bill that treats abortion as murder, even and especially in the case of rape. That may sound strange, but just as I didn't deserve to be pregnant against my consent, my daughter did not give consent to her murder. She did not deserve the death penalty I and my government gave her for my rapist crime. And as a teenager, I didn't deserve to carry the guilt of that for the rest of my life. Earlier, Becky Leach talked about the need to create a culture for the victim rather than a culture for the offender. I couldn't agree more. In my case, the offender got off scot-free on two counts when I kept my pregnancy secret and secretly had my baby aborted. The evidence for my rapist crime was destroyed and um, he had to face, or he did not have to face the death penalty for sexual assault. And in my case, I didn't have to pay the penalty for murder when I paid to have my daughter killed. After my abortion, I spent 19 days in a psychiatric hospital, traumatized after coming home from the abortion and finding remains of my baby's mangled body. I've spent 30 years suffering with PTSD, autoimmune disease, and cancer. Add to that the grief of the reality that when my own biological mother was faced with an unplanned pregnancy with me, she gave me life and family through adoption. And I didn't do the same for my daughter. Today I refer to my daughter as Hannah. After receiving loving help from a Christian ministry that helped me to fully embrace the forgiveness God had for me in Jesus Christ. If you've had an abortion, there is forgiveness. And I need to shout that from the rooftops. But wouldn't it be far better if we found more kind and compassionate love and support for women who are victimized rather than further victimizing them and their babies by encouraging and legalizing their murder. It may seem cruel to ask a woman to endure nine months of a pregnancy she didn't choose. On its face, it would seem that way. But please hear me when I tell you that the real cruelty was telling an already traumatized teenage girl that ripping apart and killing a child would end her suffering. For me, it was, the only, it was only the beginning. I wish I could turn back time and suffer for nine months rather than for 30 years. Abortion is the ultimate example of creating a culture for the offender. It enables rape, abandonment, oppression, sex trafficking, and more. And of course, we cannot forget the 63 million innocent children who have died as we have made legal their murder by the one created to love and nurture them. Please support the only pro-life bill that creates a culture that is for all victims. Thank you for your time. Wow, thank you, Jennifer. It's powerful. Thank you for being here. <coughs> Any questions? Uh, as we talked about Becky Leach earlier, courage personified being the one who testified. It's the exact same thing in your case. Thank you for being here. All right, uh, the next, uh, next witness we have, I believe, is uh, Jonathan Murdoch. Yeah, my name is Jonathan Murdoch. I am a pastor uh, from Port Arthur, Texas. Um, um, 
and I am here in favor of HB uh, House Bill 896. I represent myself and my church, and Trinity Baptist Church. Um, I don't need to convince you that abortion is wrong. One of the things I was shocked today is to know, to learn that you were against it, and that there's enough here on this panel that uh, I believe that it's murder, and it's been a blessing to me today. Thank you. So what I want to do is I want to address two things. Um, one, if a 17-year-old boy rapes a 27-year-old woman, she will not be charged for uh, statutory rape um, because we have a justice system that will sift through that. And so I support the bill for that. Secondly, um, uh, uh, Representative M M Mayer argued today that there wasn't enough representative uh, from uh, all their attorneys to say that something was wrong. And so a bill ought to get to the House because there wasn't enough support on the, from the other side. Today we've had overwhelming support. And thirdly, the question was asked to Representative Niave, uh, why hasn't this passed? And I want to answer that question. It's a great question. Thank you for the question. It says in Exodus 1.17 that the women didn't ch kill the children because they feared the Lord. And this hasn't passed, and something like this hasn't passed because men haven't feared the Lord. And I would just ask you tonight, fear the Lord. Jim, Jim Davis is not here, and Carl Klaus is not here. Okay, uh, the next panel is going to be Abigail Moreno, Wesley Thomas, Rita Palomarez, and Charles Speed. Is it Mr. Ford? Okay, go ahead, Mr. Ford. You're first. Okay, I have all the hands, but so much of it has already been said, and I appreciate all that you read and said yourself, um, Mr. Leach, and so many of y'all. seems unbearable to, to people, you know, when she was young and, and this happens and oh my gosh, what am I gonna do and how can I do this? And but God saw me through and I wasn't a religious person back then, but I knew I and I, I have no question about that. And uh, later you know, fast forward so uh, years later I had an abortion and I had suffered many years from that. Uh, I wanted to um, be... Yeah, just go, go ahead and find a closing point there. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted some things that wasn't touched on uh, that, you know, I mean, this is, I agree with everything that's been said and all, but right now with all the, the abortions, American, so many American babies are being aborted, yet we have other illegals or, or from other countries or, you know, and we're, we're never going to catch up with our population, with our, um, you know, workforce, and this is going to make a tremendous impact on our country um, as a whole, and that also, um, it's just, just ask you to wrap up. Okay, yeah, and this is just too, you know, an easy way out. It, we need to rebuild the calendar, and this is a serious matter. Hi, my name is Amanda Stagg, and I gave my testimony to Sean. I'll try to stick to 
for our one minute um, limit. I represent myself and I support House Bill 896. Midway through my husband's surgical residency, we found out that we were pregnant with our fourth child. There was anxiety and then of course excitement. But at our 20 week ultrasound, we saw that our new baby girl, who we named Mary, was missing important parts of her brain and wouldn't live long after birth. The choices were given, terminate the pregnancy or carry Mary and see what happens. We immediately chose to carry Mary as long as possible, but we struggled. My husband asked his father, who is also a physician of 35 years, isn't it more merciful to end this now? What's the difference in ending the pregnancy now or her <coughs> passing later? He wisely answered that by taking her from my womb early, we were taking life into our own hands, but by allowing her to die naturally, we left life and death in God's hands where it belongs. Some days sorrow threatened to swallow us, yet hope held us up. Hope in a God who faithfully loves us and endows all life with purpose. Mary's brief two hours of life were beautiful and filled with love. We could have missed that. I believe hopelessness and in the worst case scenarios, convenience leads us to abort our unborn children. It takes courage to choose life, especially when it feels inconvenient or unwanted, but it also brings much joy and peace. Regardless of religious belief, it is our duty to protect all life. Our choices will affect generations to come and will echo throughout eternity. Passing this bill will be a huge step towards protecting life, and the power is in our hands. Please vote to pass this bill. Thank you. I'm really glad you chose to vote. Thank you for your testimony. The chair calls on John Speed. My name is uh, Pastor John Speed. I'm pastor of Christ is King Baptist Church in Syracuse, New York, and we drove down here to testify this evening. Wow. Um, praise God for the opportunity. Uh, I also co-produced a documentary called Babies Are Murdered Here, and we're currently producing another documentary called Babies Are Still Murdered Here. Um, two points I want to make. If you say that those who murder humans outside of the womb deserve a life sentence or the death penalty, but you hedge on the issue of providing equal justice for life inside of the womb, you've revealed something about what you really believe about the pro-life issue. In so doing, you reveal that despite the pro-life plank in the platform, you have bought the pro-choice lie that life in the womb is not as precious as life outside of it. You must act, and you must do so irrespective of federal interference. All lawmakers have historical precedent for ignoring Roe. The Fugitive Slave Act was passed in 1850. Federal law demanded that northern states surrender runaway slaves to their former owners in the south. In 1850, citizens and politicians met in Syracuse to discuss the response. Reverend J.W. Lagoon, a runaway slave, pastor, and abolitionist, addressed the meeting as follows. What is life to me if I am to be a slave in Tennessee? My neighbors, I have lived with you for many years and you know me. My home is here, my children were born here, and do you think I can be taken away from you and from my wife and children and be a slave in Tennessee? Has the president and his secretary sent this enactment up here to you, Mr. Chairman, to enforce on me in Syracuse, and will you obey him? Logan could speak for himself, these babies cannot. Has the Supreme Court sent Roe down here to enforce on these babies in Texas, and will you obey that ruling? You must not. Thank you, Mr. Speed. Uh, from New York, you said? Yes, sir. Thank you. Welcome to Texas. Uh, <laughs> Next group will be Tom Glass, Joel Tope, Anna Forget, and Donna Escarino. Uh, Ms. Moreno, let's start with you. Ms. Moreno here. Okay. Wesley Thomas. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> members of the committee, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you for your patience. My name is Wesley Thomas from Dayton, Texas. I'm a precinct chair for the Republican uh, Party of Liberty County. And I'm here today representing Abolish Abortion Texas. I'm for the bill. Members, I think you know that abortion is murder. I think you do want to end it. This bill is very simple. Preborn persons should have the same protection under law as born persons. That's it. 
intelligence? Let's be very clear. Your failure to pass this bill out of this committee is a death sentence for 110,000 babies that will be killed over the next two years. They're made in the image of God. If you were to change this bill, you would actually be making the same mistake as those Texas legislators which made our laws inequitable a long time ago, which actually led to Roe versus Wade in the first place. If you were to do that, you would be creating a bill which would actually allow only do-it-yourself abortions. Thomas, I need to ask you to uh, stick to the time limit. We've, we've got a, we have 203 witnesses left. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was over that fast. So that, that, yeah, I know. This goes quite quick. Yes. One minute goes quick. Absolutely. So I'm really going to try to stick to it. Thank you. Wrap up. Don't encourage and expedite the innovation of the abortion industry by right. promoting those. Thank, Thank you. you. Chair calls Rita Palomarez. <coughs> Kenderholt, committee members for hearing us all day. My name is Rita Palmeras. I am representing myself, and I am for this bill, HB 896. Women for a long time have been told a very big lie, that our bodies are our own. It is not our own when we become pregnant. Men, when you impregnate a woman, it is no longer <coughs> her body. It is your baby inside her body. You have every right to stop her from killing your baby. You should not make any decision on, she should not make any decision on her own without you. Killing babies is, is barbaric. If Oklahoma can abolish abortion, why can't Texas? So today I have brought <clears throat> inconvenient Isabel. Uh, my mommy did not want me because she had other plans and I was not part of them. Mommy always wanted a family, just not now. I was taken to a doctor that hated me enough to rip my tiny legs off, break my fingers, and my to get, toes. Your, your one minute is up, if you could finish your testimony. Yes, you. all right. Um, break my fingers, suck my organs out because my little head was too big. He broke into pieces. I never did anything um, but to you, Mommy, I love you, and I love your warm body. Mommy, am I really worth more dead than alive? Charles Speed. My name is Charlie Speed. I'm from Syracuse, New York. Um, thank you, Mr. Green and um, Chairman members. Um, I am um, doing it um, myself, and um, I'm testifying for the bill. Hey, Charles. Yeah. Take your time. Okay. okay. Take your time, buddy. Um, I used to live in Texas for half of my life, and um. Since abortion is murder, it is only right to give equal justice to the babies who are murdered. What if someone came in in my in here today and murdered me? You would you um say? I guess we can arrest the murderer because Charlie was only 15 and he's from New York. If you were if you said that you would not be just a lawmaker. If you say the baby in the womb is a human, but do not um, have a penalty for ending the baby's life, have you? How can you be just a lawmaker? I know that people want to end abortion without giving a penalty to the person who pays for your abortion taxes, going to change the law so that. Those higher hitmen to murder people outside of the womb get taken for jaywalking. Babies are murdered here and abortion now. If anyone here has had an abortion for you, you can um, be forgiven and healed with if you repent of your sin and place your faith in um, Jesus alone. I hope you will. Thank you. Swirsky, Martha Doss, Bruce Stinson, and Shelley Rubenstein. Tom, go ahead. 
Yes, my name is Tom Glass. I represent Texas Constitutional Enforcement and myself, and we are in favor of HB 896. Uh, I, the, uh, the proponents of this bill face not only the policy aspects uh, of the bill in terms of persuasion, but to, to overturn a notion that has been destructive of the lives and liberty uh, for about a century and a half here in the United States, and that is the idea that the Supreme Court is the final arbiter of constitutional meaning. Um, the, uh, the, the person who gets to decide finally is the boss, and we were never intended to be uh, ruled by judiciary. And in fact, Roe is a perfect example of uh, the tragedy that happens when that occurs. Uh, in, in fact, uh, you know, this doctrine has been taught in law schools, and, um, and essentially what they're telling us is that it's civil disobedience for us to pass this law because, of course, disobedience implies master servant, and the Supreme Court is our ruler, but that's wrong. They're the ones that are being disobedient to their supreme law and to God's law. We're the masters. It's been perfectly right for us to take over and become the sovereign people that we are and declare we're sovereign. Thank you. Okay. Is it Joel? Yes. Joel Coke, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Is Anna uh, Forget not here? Anna Forget or uh, Donna Escarino? Okay, Joel, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, representatives. My name is Joel Tope, and I'm representing myself today. And I'm here in favor of House Bill 896. Uh, I'm the student pastor at First Baptist Church Kingsland. Um, I wanted to say real quickly, look around this room. Uh, it should be really clear how Texans feel about abortion. We're all thankful to you as our representatives. I know that there is some hesitancy in passing this bill since it will hold women criminally liable for the act of abortion. I would like to point out that there is clearly only one innocent victim in each of these cases. Psalm 19 says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Attempting to remove the God-given consequences for sin has led us to where we are today. The truth is, is that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and all are accountable for that sin. Declaring this fact will lead the women and men to their need for a savior who is the only one who can truly bring healing in this mess. I pray you have listened closely to the testimonies of those women's, women who have been guilty of killing their babies in the past. Please vote for this bill and challenge the followers of Jesus Christ, like myself, to be the hands and feet of our Savior today. Thank you. Chair calls on Lexi Swirsky. Lexi, are you here? Yes. Okay, come on up. Martha Doss. Bruce Stinson. Shelly Rubenstein. Okay, so Martha Doss is not here. I'm here. Sorry. Okay, come on, if you don't mind. Um, Alexi Swirsky, go ahead. Yes, my name is Alexi Swirsky. I'm representing myself. I support House Bill 896. There was a question earlier focusing on how many illegal abortions occur each year in Texas. I agree with Representative Swanson that that question is irrelevant to the matter discussed. Even one murder of an unborn child is too many, whether the abortion is illegal or legal. Whether one baby or one million babies are murdered through illegal or legal abortions each year in Texas, the criminal penalty should be severe enough to present the future, prevent the future murder of unborn children. Since when does whether an immoral act is considered a crime or not depend on how often that immoral act occurs? Upon conception, a baby has its own unique DNA which will never again be re replicated in another human being. Each person has something unique to accomplish and contribute to the world. Texas and the United States needs each child to be born and to make those contributions. Please vote to pass House Bill 896 out of this committee. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, thank you for your testimony. Um, you were referring and just testifying about the bill that Representative Swanson had, correct? Yes, what I thought was relevant to this bill. Okay, thank you. Point taken. Um, we've got to keep our testimony to the bill at the end. Um, I'm sorry I missed that, but um, we need to make sure that our testimony is on the bill, not on any other bills. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Ms. Swirsky, just to clarify your position, 
you're here to testify on this bill, yes. correct? And you're for House Bill 896. Yes. And you're not here to talk about any other bills, correct? I'm, I'm talking right now in this testimony. Are you here to talk about and testify for House Bill 896 and no other bill? Thank you. Um, the chair calls Martha Doss. I don't think, Martha, go ahead. Good evening, my name is Martha Doss. I, rep I represent myself, I support this bill. I'm still in disbelief that it is legal to end the lives of innocent, helpless, precious babies in a horrific and violent way. And I will not remain silent and call this for what it is, and it is murder. The pain <laughs> that these helpless babies go through is sickening. The abortion procedure is disgusting and violent. Can you imagine being dismembered and their precious little bodies being ripped apart limb from limb, the pain that they endure, and I cannot understand how we allow this to continue to happen. Yet we have federal laws that protect animals that are extinct, but we remain silent when it comes to human life being terminated. And nowadays, abortion is even encouraged in, in um, you, if your child has Down syndrome or because a baby may have some uh, deformities. It saddens me because I believe that all children are miracles from God. And that for those of you that are for pro-choice, I just wonder how you would feel if it was you being aborted. Would you still stand by uh, your support of abortion if it was you being aborted, if it was you being ripped apart limb from limb? Thank you. Um, the chair recognizes Bruce Stinson. My name is Bruce Stinson. I'm from Hampshire, Texas, and I represent myself and First Baptist Church in Hampshire. I'm here today to support, <laughs> voice my support for House Bill 896. <laughs> As a pastor, it would be obvious for my support of this bill to be purely and unapologetically biblical, and if I had no other reason, that alone would be enough. But I come today as a father of a daughter who was born at 26 and a half weeks mid-pregnancy. During a routine prenatal checkup, it was determined my wife and baby were in danger. After talking with our OBGYN, it was decided the safest way to handle the trauma that was happening in my wife's body was to deliver our daughter early. So in August of 2002, we welcomed our two pound, six ounce daughter into the world. To think that her body was completely formed, beautifully created, breathing, blood flowing, and that body today across many states in our country would be perfectly acceptable to abort her at this term in pregnancy is grotesque and unimaginable to me. As a father, as a Christian, and a lifelong Texan, nothing would make me more proud of our state than to unite our laws in regarding the sanctity of human life. Hello. <clears throat> my name is Shelly Rubinski, and I'm here on behalf of my unborn child who was killed at three weeks gestation at the Austin Planned Parenthood in 1973. Hmm. I was a dancer at San Marcos at, at Southwest Texas State University, and I felt the conception. Um, if you go back to when I was a child, um, Planned Parenthood came to my fifth grade classroom when I was nine years old and played pornographic videos and made us get together with boys and play games like put the condom on the banana. And she had a mantra and it went like this, abortion is the answer, abortion is the way. You can do anything you want and abortion makes it okay. I was horrified, but I didn't have the words as a nine-year-old to express how everything that had happened that day made me feel. And so I asked my father, is abortion okay? And my father said, yes. If it takes a few babies, welfare babies, off the welfare rolls, then yes, abortion is okay. So when I found myself in 1973, pregnant and afraid. I followed my education and I went to Planned Parenthood in Austin, Texas one month after Roe versus Wade. It was up and standing, state of the art. There was blood on the cannula used from pre previous abortions. My uterus was perforated and the infection nearly killed me, rendering me barren. But there's joy in the story. There's joy in the journey, and I know I'm out of time, but I have to tell you the good part. When I was, when I was um, 35, I had the opportunity to adopt a baby girl 
who was conceived as a result of rape and scheduled for a saline abortion when she was six months in the womb. But her biological mother said, I'm not going to do that. It doesn't sound safe. If you can't even tell me how much it's going to cost because it's big, why would I do that? And so she went searching for a family to adopt my daughter. And we were the ones that she chose. And there's a part of the story that no one else has told tonight. And that is my daughter is now 33 years old. And she has given me four beautiful grandchildren, Thomas, John Parker, Eloise, and Lucy, would not be with us brightening everyone they meet with their beauty, with their intelligence, with their love for life. Um, and so we're, we're aborting generations. And we're aborting them based on having told young women lies. Jasmine Wang, Caroline Caselli. Caroline, why don't we start with you? Great. Um, to spice things up, um, my name is Caroline Caselli. Um, I am representing myself and I am against this bill. Um, I'm a venture backed tech CEO and I just moved my company to Austin after raising $2.4 million. I'm here because I'm concerned about the privacy and freedom of my female employees. To say this bill is extreme is an understatement, uh, actually murdering your citizens um, for a medical procedure is uh, pretty extreme to me. Um, I moved to Texas because it's supposed to be pro-business, um, however taking away the privacy of my female employees is not a pro-business move. The issues here have been settled by the Supreme Court law for the past 46 years. So regardless about how you feel about the issue personally, it is a privacy issue and it's also a business issue. And so I encourage you to think about in your push for limited government to also consider that limited government and focus on privacy in a way that extends to the medical realm as well. I know you've heard compelling testimony from essentially 350 people. Uh, that are anti-choice, and I want to let you know that not everyone feels this way. Uh, you have constituents who don't believe the way that you do, and, um, and I, am, I implore you to legislate lightly. Um, you have an obligation to the broader 28 million Texans who are much more diverse than those who are in this room. Thank you. Thank you, members. Questions? Jasmine Wayne. Your name, affiliation, and your position on the bill. My name is Jasmine Wang, and I'm here with Merrill Pro-Choice Texas. I'm here to testify against HB 896. This bill is nothing but an attempt to criminalize, stigmatize, and strip access to abortion. The bill authors know that this legislation is unconstitutional because of federal judicial precedent set by Roe v. Wade. So even giving this bill a hearing is a waste of both time and resources. With no exceptions for rape, incest, fetal abnormalities, or even the health of the mother, legislators are expressing a blatant disregard for both the proper practice of medicine and the individuals who would be forced into potentially life-threatening okay. situations. All right, I'm going to ask you some questions, Ms. Wang. You're with NARAL Pro Choice Texas. Yes, sir. Or do you do NARAL's Pro Choice Texas Twitter account? I don't. You don't? Okay. Because uh, I've seen you retweet some stuff tonight that NARAL has, has tweeted about this being a waste of time and essentially attacking me for giving this bill a hearing. Do you realize that every member who files legislation, nearly 300 bills in this committee, every single one of those members are getting a hearing? Sure. Yes or no? Yeah, um, I remember you saying last week that you would not put up any legislation that would criminalize abortion. I said, I said very clearly that I would have a hearing on every single bill. Every single bill, and that's exactly what I'm doing. And frankly, I think the members of this legislature, Republican and Democrat, the people of Texas, deserve no less from the chairman of this committee. So you hear so, be very clear, Ms. Wang, I want to ask you some questions. Do you believe that there should be any limitations on a woman's right to get an abortion? No. So at 39 weeks, 
you believe that a woman should be able to terminate the life of her child? If that is what is yes the best, or no. yes. At 39 weeks, yes. Mm. You believe that a woman should be able to terminate terminate the life of that Absolutely. child? Absolutely. Why? Because it is not any of. There's no one in this room who can make a decision. Yes, abortion is health care. And I am not I am not in any position to speak for a woman in her personal decision. That is not my okay, place and that is not anyone's who's, place in this who's room. Who's speaking for that 39 week old baby? The mother. She will make the decision for her body. What, and what no, is what, best what for her the, body and her life. What about the baby, Ms. Wayne? Mm -hmm. What about that baby? 39 what about, weeks. What about the mother? Ms. Wayne, I'm asking you about that baby. That baby that is living and breathing. His heart, her heart is beating, she's moving, she feels pain, she recoils. This is 39 weeks. Science actually proves that a baby can feel pain at 20 weeks. But let's focus on the 39 weeks. Let's focus on that just for a second. Because I want the people of Texas to understand very clearly, not what your position is necessarily, but what the position of NARAL Pro-Choice Texas is. I'm not speaking for NARAL when I say that. You're you're here testifying on behalf of NARAL Pro-Choice Texas. And I'm here on behalf of myself. What is the position of NARAL Pro-Choice Texas? I can't speak to that. Or does NARAL Pro-Choice Texas believe there should be any limitations on women's right to get an abortion? Representative Leach, respectfully, Chair, I... Chairman Leach, please. Thank you. Chairman Leach, respectfully. I'm here in the capacity as a legislative intern, and I cannot speak on behalf of the entire organization. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to send along some information to your office. I, I am very, very disturbed with that testimony, and I've seen throughout the testimony over the past few hours People in this room, a few of whom are sitting on that panel snickering and laughing and giggling with each other at what people in this room themselves have gone through. The life's most difficult decisions and the most difficult scenarios and situations. Women who themselves have had abortions and have suffered greatly for their whole lives as a result of that decision. And I cannot, as the chairman of this committee, put up with snickering and laughing and giggling when we're dealing with literally life and death issues. And I don't appreciate it. Members, any other questions? Representative Krause. I, uh, Chair, I, I do want to correct one thing that I think was alleged earlier. You never said that you would not hear a bill. You said you would not pass a bill out of this committee that criminalize uh, a woman. So I, I do think that's a distinction. Uh, Thank you for your testimony. Would, uh, does NARAL, would they support um, partial birth abortion? As stated previously, I'm serving as a legislative intern and I am in no capacity to speak on behalf of the organization on any official position and I defer to our executive director. You're, okay, you're, I, I'm you're here in front of the committee on behalf of NARAL Pro Choice Texas. I, personally, partial birth abortion up to 39 weeks, uh, is that okay? I'm not a physician, Representative Krause. I'm I just can't. asking for your position uh, whether partial birth abortion is something that That's the mom has a choice. That's not up to me because whatever is best for the health of the woman, that is something that she and the physician must decide. Okay, I agree, but uh, or, or I, I, I see your point. I don't agree. I, I see your point. But earlier you had said that we shouldn't even be having this conversation because that's unconstitutional. The Supreme Court has found that partial birth abortion, uh, partial birth abortion ban, is constitutional. So, you would not agree that the Supreme Court got that right and would allow a mother to have a partial birth abortion, even though the Supreme Court has said that that should not happen. I can't speak to that. Okay. Thanks. Members, questions. All right. Thank you, Ms. Cassell. You're not uh, recognized at the time. We'll come back to you in just a sec. Um, uh, Tatum Zico. Hello, my name is Tatum Zico. I am representing East Mount Warriors and myself. Um, I'm testifying against this bill. I have many reasons to be here. And one of them is this idea, you talk a lot about murder. And I'd like to talk to you about that. As someone who's had to deal with the grief when I was 18 years old, a friend of mine was murdered in Dallas. Her name was Zoe Hastings. She was brutally murdered. And that's grief. And I resent listening to you all speak about abortion, especially 
a six week abortion when the fetus has not moved forward, when it's still a clump of cells, scientifically speaking, that's not at all equivalent. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I am an advocate for survivors of sexual assault. I've been helping survivors for the past two and a half years, and another issue that I have with this bill is that it takes no exceptions. <coughs> so a survivor of a rape, which I know we've, we've heard from a beautiful testimony from a rape survivor, and I appreciate that testimony, but I also appreciate that she was given the choice and I hope that we get to continue giving rape survivors the choice. Furthermore, at UT Austin, one in five women will be raped at their time in college. In the US, one in three women will get an abortion. There are almost 200,000 more women in Texas than there are men, and only 33 women in the Texas House. So that means we have to trust the 114 men will believe our pain, even though they can never understand what pregnancy is like. Men are born with bodily autonomy, and I am told at a young age to protect my body from harm. However, I was never taught about safe sex in school, and I wish I had been, because that would have honestly helped a lot of the conversations that I'm having in school for rape survivors. When you all prepared for your LSATs, your SATs, your ACTs, it was probably recommended that for greatest success, you should take a class in order to better succeed, right? That makes sense, right? The more you know, the better off you will be. The same can be said for teaching our students about sex. We set our kids up to fail by not teaching them about safe sex. This bill tells women with histories that they are not important, that they, they are left to be mothers. And my mom was a stay-at-home mother, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that some of us don't want that for our futures. And I appreciate all of the testimonies that came before us. And I appreciate you all staying here so late and allowing me to go over time. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Kate. We really appreciate you being here for your testimony. If there was any questions. All right, Rhea. Rhea. Rhea, what's your last name again? Shahani. Shahani. If you'll state your name and affiliation and position on the bill. So my name is Rhea Shahani. I'm here with Dean Sunworth and for myself. And I'm here against this bill. And everyone here seems to be arguing for the sanctity of a supposed life, but no one here seems to care about the sanctity of a woman's life. You say you're pro-life, that every life is important, but what about the women who have and will die as a result of this law? You say that abortions won't occur if this is passed, but countries that have made abortions illegal have some of the highest rates of abortions in the world, with 37 out of 1,000 women getting abortions. And out of these women, 23,000 mothers, daughters, and sisters died last year alone because of something that could be prevented. In the US, less than 0.001% of women die from abortion. Are you really willing to take responsibility for all the women you killed through the passage of this bill? How can you be pro-life and pro-killing women? Banning abortions has nothing to reduce the need for abortion. It just perpetuates a narrative that women's lives do not matter. If you want to reduce abortions, stop teaching abstinence-only education. Start expanding contraceptives. That's what's decreased abortion by 20% in the last 10 years in developing countries. Not through super superficial band-aids that claim to fix the problem. Not by enacting unconstitutional laws that take away the rights of your constituents. And not by telling people with uterus <coughs> that their lives don't matter. I urge you to vote no on this bill and allow women to have their own autonomy. The people here testifying for the bill do not represent Texans. The millions of us who could not be here today because we do not have the privilege of taking the day off. I urge you to vote no, because if you don't, you'll find someone who will. Thank you for your testimony. I do want to just clarify for the record that we've had um, to testify um, over 350 folks, and there's 10 who are registered against the bill. And the folks that I know that we've heard from tonight, the vast majority of them have, on their own dime, left their jobs, taken time off from work, taken vacation time. They're, they're not here because they've got all the money in the world or that because they've got plentiful vacation days or because they have nothing else to do. These people believe in this cause, just like you do.
again, let's let's respect them for being here in their capital at 10:15 at night with 200 witnesses left to go. Let's show some respect for everyone, no matter what their position is. I do respect that, and I do admire their dedication of being involved in this democratic process of turning away democracy works. But I also urge you to look at the socioeconomic and racial makeup of the people here today. People who do not have paid sick days, people who do not have paid leave, who cannot come here because they cannot afford to take time off, because if they do, they won't have money to feed their children and pay rent. I just urge you to keep that in consideration. That's all I'm saying. Noted. Same. Thank you for pointing that out. We appreciate it. Um, members, any questions? Caroline, uh, we recognize you. Did you have a question? Yeah, I just um, I just wanted to notice that there was sort of like a, you know, a diversion, I guess, in the you were sort of like calling us out, essentially, for snickering, but then there was also no equal call out. People were saying amen in the background, and so I just wanted to notice that, and, you know, like, I think everybody here wants to be respected and have, you know, access to that. So. I, I uh, excuse the chair for um, allowing people to say amen and calling out people who are snickering at other people. You'll have to excuse me for that. Members, any questions? Thank you for your testimony. Um, the chair calls Karen Bain, Stephanie Pena, Abigail Paz, and Fiona Mitchell. The next panel will be Robert Winter, Justin Stanford, Christina Haroff, and Heather Hebert. <coughs> Ms. Bain, let's, Ms. Bain, um, let's start with you. Honorable Representative, my name is Karen Bain. I'm here in favor of this bill, and I'm representing myself. I'd like to read the column of David. Before me in my mother's womb, like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. This clearly declares our human conception taken to birth, taken to birth. There are many states that are considering abolition of abortion. I surely do hope and pray that Texas is the first. One thing that we've not heard about today is about decapitation or dismemberment and the poisoning of the children in the womb. 150 children have died in Texas today. I implore you with all the power and strength and might that you have to stand up for them. Thank you, Karen. Uh, any questions? Okay, um, is Stephanie here? Stephanie Pena? What about Abigail Paz? <laughs> Fiona Mitchell? Karen, and thank you so much for your testimony. Okay, um, Robert Winter? Justin Stanford, Christina Haroff, and Heather Howe. Let's do uh, ladies first here. Heather, can we start with you? Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Heather Havard. I represent myself, and I am for this bill. Um, I have studied criminal justice at Sam Houston State University, and in doing so, I came across the case of Dina Schlosser. This Texan woman was convicted of murder after dismembering her 11-month-old daughter. She did this with a kitchen knife, drenching herself in her daughter's blood as she heard her scream. I ask, what is the difference between this and a commonplace abortion? There is ultrasound proof that these unborn human babies try to cry out and fight back as they are dismembered alive in their mother's womb. This is happening to approximately 200 babies every day in this state alone. This has to stop. We urge you to vote today to approve this bill as a law criminalizing the murder of the unborn in the state of Texas. Thank you, Heather. Uh, Christina Harrell. Good evening, my name is Christina Harhoff. I am representing myself and I speak for this bill. I have been ministering to mothers with scheduled abortions now for about eight years, both outside the clinics and in the pre-abort support groups as they post questions about their upcoming surgeries. I would ask you to open your folders, please, that we've passed out to you. 
You will see pictures of the antics of the clinic escorts, uh, dancing and tutus and clinic escort uh, defense vests, um, as well as the aborting parents writing things like, Jesus loves this place outside of the abortion clinics. In the paperwork inside of your folders, you will see 11 pages of copied and pasted quotes from my conversations uh, with these mothers pre and post abortion. Quotes like on page four, where one mother says she is killing because she doesn't want to look fat in her bikini. On page 10, one mother jokes about sticking her baby in a blender. Aborting mothers regularly these days, regularly, use the terms kill and murder and baby, as you will see in the emails that, that I provided. And it is for these reasons that, as Ephesians 4.26 says, I hope you will be full of righteous anger and criminalize this evil in Texas. To only punish providers and not the mothers who sign the paperwork, giving the abortionist legal permission to have at their child, to pay their hundreds and thousands of dollars, to walk in willingly, to position their bodies so that the abortionists can have at their babies is not just. For without the mothers, there would be no providers. Please do not be deceived. Do not be hoodwinked into thinking that today's aborting mothers are by and large victims. Thank you so much. Um, Justin Stanford. Hello. My name is Justin Stamper. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying for HB 896. 896 is consistent with the second greatest commandment in scripture to love our neighbors as yourself. That includes <coughs> preventing children from being killed and preventing women from killing their children. Or anyone who forces them or assists them in killing their children. 896 establishes justice for all Texans. So all I want to say is that God and the state of Texas are watching you, and if you pass this through, we will support you. And the lives of 11, 110,000 babies are dependent on you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Justice. Um, Robert Winner. Good evening. My name is Robert Winner. I represent myself and the church I pastor, First Baptist Church of Finette in Beaumont, and I speak for uh, the bill before you. I stand uh, before you today as a minister classically trained in conservative biblical theology, but I don't appeal to you on the basis of that classical theology. Instead, I appeal to you on a basis of a much lower threshold. The founders of this great republic in declaring independence from tyrants far away anchored their pursuit of freedom in the idea that every person is created with certain inalienable rights, among which are the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In their declaration, birthing this great nation, they were not alone. For all of history, it's been natural and obvious in the hearts of men and women everywhere that human life is unique and special <coughs> and precious and worth every effort to expense to protect and promote. Every person, the religious, the irreligious, the deist, the atheist, the learned, the ignorant, every person knows innately that there is something special and unique in every human individual. It's the height of absurdity to fall on the sword protecting the rights of free speech and assembly and religion and against unlawful search and seizure while blindly skipping past the most basic and inalienable rights of the human individual to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is way past time for you, our legislators, to take up your responsibility to guard the most basic human rights, the rights of the most vulnerable, the most powerless, the voiceless. I urge you, reject the absurd. Reject the illogical. Vote yes on the bill before you. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, <coughs> members of the Thank you all for being here today. <laughs> Chair calls on the next panel Amparo Apadoka. Apad <laughs> Apadaka. Apadaka, all right. That's what I was going to say. Uh, Joshua Christie, Anika Hara, and Michael Chang. Come on up. The next panel will be Catherine Vickner, Caleb Head, Delaney Head, and Graham Feathers.
Simply put, the word of God, like everyone has correctly stated today, says that God knits babies together in their mother's womb. Jesus died, Jesus Christ died on the cross to save the world because human life has immeasurable value. Again, this has been stated repeatedly throughout this evening. Um, I also want to add the scope of this bill is very important in that it merely aligns existing murder laws equally. We can talk about capital punishment, actions under duress, and other extenuating factors. My only point, and the point of this bill, is to not add special exceptions for killing preborn babies. Those are all separate topics already addressed in the law. We're not reinventing what rights they do and don't have. We're not regulating who can kill them, how they can be killed, when they can be killed. It simply grants preborn children the same rights as born babies. We have, worried, we have waited 46 years to close loopholes in the current law. We cannot leave any this time. Please pass this bill exactly. Um, Thank you. Anika? It's Anika. An oh, okay. Anika. Anika, um, why don't you just state your name? <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, my name is Annika. I'm a Texas teenager, and I'm speaking for this bill. And, uh, Annika, your last name? Harha. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. I represent myself. I do not believe that people are more valuable because they're older, stronger, bigger, independent, or in a location outside of the womb. I believe that the same laws that protect people who are born should apply to those who are not born. I believe in equal protection for all human life. As a student in Texas, I do not understand why mothers are not treated equally in accordance with our murder laws. I don't understand why they are shown favoritism when it comes to committing murder, just because they are women. And that is why I am for this bill. It does not give mothers who murder free pass while criminalizing other people who murder older, bigger, and stronger people. We as teenage Texans know it's a baby. We know abortion is killing that baby. And I think most Texans of any age know that too. What we don't know is why those babies that everyone is killing are not given the same equal protection under our law. Please pass this bill through this committee that we may ensure justice by equally applying the law to all. Thank you. Thank you, Anika. Great job. How old are you, Anika? 14. 14. Are you in school? Huh. In Conroe? Well, not today, obviously. But did you miss school today? Um. <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, no. I did. Um, <laughs> what time? Yeah. Right, right. What time did you get here this morning? Um, around eight-ish. Eight. So, um, fourteen hours ago. You've been yes, waiting sir. all day. Thank you. I, I really hope that that previous witness um, heard your testimony and realized that there's just normal, average, everyday Texans of all ages, from four to ninety. Um, who are here taking part in this process today on both sides of the issue. And uh, I'm so proud of you and thank you. You did a great job. I am so encouraged um, from some of the bills that we heard last week and these bills tonight with the young people, the young people, the millennials, and even younger than yourself who are taking on this issue. Um, that gives me great, great hope for this country. So thank you for the great. Um, Hi, my name is Michael Chang. I am representing myself and I'm testifying for this bill. Uh, it's been hard spending this much time away from my toddler and wife who's actually expecting and experiencing pretty bad morning sickness right now. Uh, but we both agree that this is a cause worth fighting for and so it's good to be here. Uh, this bill simply does what makes, at its heart, perfect sense. Give equal protection under the law for all living persons born and unborn. This is a unique opportunity that we have before us and I urge you all to remember that a holy and righteous God will judge the decisions that we make and he has put you in this position for a purpose. Please allow HB 896 to move to the floor for a vote. For a vote. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you, uh, Michael. Appreciate you being here as well. Thanks to the panel. Um, any members, any questions? All right, y'all go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, chair calls Catherine Pickner, Caleb Head, Delaney Head, and is it Graham Featherston? All right. The next panel will be Stephanie Jacobson, Abigail Apodaca, Kara Sarhoff, and Kaya Arhoff. Probably Annika's. Okay. Um, Catherine? Is there a 
Catherine Dick here. She's not here. Okay, uh, Delaney. Delaney, go ahead. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to speak today. I am Delaney Head, representing myself, and I am for the bill. I sit before you as a 22-year-old mother of three preteen children who my husband and I have been in the process of adopting. I assume many of you have children. Imagine someone raped, physically abused, drugged, denied education, and starved your child like they did mine. You would want every ounce of justice for your child that you could get. Many would say that my children are better off, would have been better off aborted. They're not. Their lives are so valuable. They have added so much joy and pride to my life. Being able to see them go through what they've gone through and still have the compassion for a homeless man on the street to give them his gift card that was given to him to decorate his room. We need a justice system that actually hands out justice to make people think twice before committing these kind of horrific crimes. Abortion is murder. The question was asked earlier about the death penalty for the woman. Abortion is genocide. It is the mass destruction of our population. It is the mass destruction of our future children and the future of our country. Genocide is listed as by the Department of Justice as a crime of fitting of the death penalty. I ask y'all to give this bill a vote and pass it. Thank you. Thank you, Delaney. Appreciate your uh, testimony. These are your gifts. Thank you. Can I assume Caleb? Yes, sir. Mine's going to be very similar. Okay. <laughs> just, just say what she said. That's yeah, pretty much. Uh, go ahead. <coughs> Caleb had representing myself for the bill. Um, so. Yeah, so uh, our children are the uh, poster children for uh, the pro-abortion argument that says uh, it's better to have an abortion than to bring children into this world that uh, will just suffer. And um, we're just here to say that, that it's not true, um, that those children are precious, that those children are wanted and loved, and they deserve to be brought into this world. It doesn't matter how bad their life is going to be because they are worth it. They are, they are so precious and they are loved. Um, they, our children have found love and safety and um, healing in our family, and um, and yet many people believe that it's better for them to not be in this world. And so when when people say that um, it, it's it's better for them to for children with who will have a hard life to be aborted, um, you're saying that my children should have been aborted. You're saying that my that children like mine are better off dead, and it is it, it's not true. Um, Children are a blessing from the Lord, and they are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. Um, so we just ask you guys to please call a vote on the bill and uh, to pass it. You know, um, these children need our protection and need our love, all of them. Thank you. Graham, thank you. Appreciate y'all. Graham, thank you. Hello, my name is Graham Featherston. I'm a native Texan, and I'm here representing myself, and I'm testifying for this bill. My birth mother had me at 24 weeks gestation, and I weighed one pound nine ounces when I was born, and I'm gra very grateful to be alive today. My birth mother hid her pregnancy and could have aborted me. She believed in equal protection for all children, both born and unborn, and chose to put me up for adoption. I am here for all the preborn children whose mothers did not believe in equal protection and legally murdered their babies. Those mothers should not have the right to terminate their babies' lives, no matter what the circumstances. Our society should care about the lives of the unborn, and I will testify that I am glad that my birth mother cared, or would not be standing before you today. Most mothers do not want to kill their babies, and that they have the option to do so is evil. I ask today that you do as my birth mother did, and choose equal protection for all children, and pass this bill. Thank you. Um, the chair calls uh, Stephanie Jacobson, Abigail, um, Abigail, I'm going to let you, is it Abigail? All right, I'll let you go first with you so you can pronounce your last name correctly for me. Uh, Karis and Kaya, Haram. Um, <laughs> All right, Abigail, go ahead. Hello, my name is Abby Apabaka. I am a Texan. I am representing myself and testifying for 
HB 896. Why are we killing babies? To make life easier? Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. For all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So like we know that he can direct our paths and we can trust him whenever we are um, in hard decisions. Exodus 20, 13 says, You shall not murder. Psalm 127 verse 3 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is our reward. I am only 11. Some of you be thinking, wow, why does she care about this? But I care about the millions of babies dying each year. I am thankful for the wonderful family I have, and I hope the committee will let this vote pass. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 through 14 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether it is good or evil. Psalm 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Mm -hmm. I love babies, and I have one great, and I have a great one, and his name is Joseph. He's my youngest brother. I have six. <laughs> and one sister. Abby, uh, yeah, you can give her a round of applause. your kindness in allowing me to speak tonight. Um, hello, my name is Karis Harhoff. I'm a high school student in Texas, and I'm speaking for this bill. I am representing myself. My family has been reaching out to actively avoiding mothers for around eight years. I've noticed that my mom has perhaps never come from a mother over all these years who didn't know this baby. They all know this baby these days. Second, I've noticed that the mothers often joke about killing their mother. One of the last mothers my mom reached out to told her in writing the night before her abortion, women are greater than babies. Tomorrow I will prove it that the baby survived and happened. After she wrote that to my mom, she included a laugh of the heart and cry in emoticon. And so that is why I'm for this bill. Aborting mothers are often not so sweet and innocent to their very lives. Because of that, I support not only making abortion illegal for every Texas baby of any age, but I also support punishing the mothers who are to violate this law going forward. My name is Stephanie Jacobson, and I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm here representing myself, and I am in favor of this HB 896. It has been said that no little girl ever dreams of becoming a prostitute, and I can say with much conviction that no little girl ever dreams of having an abortion. I've had two abortions. Two lies perpetrated on women looking for abortions are abortions are safe. Abortion is anything but safe. A potential autonomous human being with a heartbeat is torn limb from limb. Death is never safe. Abortion is a decision. This is the second lie. Abortion is a decision between a woman 
and her doctor, to be clear, I never saw or discussed my pregnancy benefits, risks, or all alternatives of the abortion procedure with any doctor. The ruling on Roe v. Wade lied to us. The law is there to protect, and it did, did not do the job. Abortion undermines the fabric of the woman and the fiber of this nation. When we don't value life, nothing we do has value. Liam Elias and Victoria Isabel were given names. Why? Because they existed. I now have joy because I know they existed. The fight for per personhood and the fight for life now rests in your hands. Toivaya Nelms, Rebecca Long, and Damaris Tudor. Mr. Wheeler? <coughs> is, is John Wheeler here? Um, Sam, go ahead. You're up. May I approach? My name is Sam Bryan. Canada, Texas. I'm here testifying on my behalf for the bill. Uh, may I approach? Um, for what? For what? Uh, show, show, uh, sh show us from right here if you can. Um, this right here is uh, Haley May Bryan. My daughter. She's 16 months old now. We were told that we were going to have to pull the plug or consider it. Uh, the placenta had erupted. <laughs> prior to an uh, emergency C-section. It was unknown uh, as to how long she was without oxygen. And it took additional eight minutes to resuscitate her to establish a heartbeat. <coughs> With all the odds stacked against us, what you're looking at here is what it looks like for, for God's grace. Because earlier in my life, uh, the very first time I was ever put in a position to, to, to take a life was at the age of 23 when I was downrange in Iraq. Uh, that particular moment in my life, uh, that part that slipped away from me when I took a life, it was because uh, upon further investigation, we found no explosive devices or weapon systems in the vehicle. So that weighed extremely heavy on my heart, uh, and I felt a sense of conviction, and I actually wept and prayed for the family. Later on, in 2008, 2007, 2008, I was in a relationship where we chose to abort. And it weighed so heavy that no one ever tells you about the effects, about the long-term emotional effects. And that's as, as the father of the child, of the unborn, that we made that decision. And it had such a long-lasting effect that when it came to my precious daughter, whom I'm married with my wife now, and the long-lasting effects, I would not wish the emotional turmoil and the long-term effects of making that decision with as many available resources. If we put as much uh, attention on resources available as we do abortions, I think we would see a, a long-standing change of hearts on getting back to the basics of humanity. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for your testimony. Okay. Um, is, it, is it Larry? Larry, Mike Talk. All right, Larry, go ahead. Uh, being for myself, I'm for the bill. Uh, abortion is crumbling in Texas. And when abortion is illegal, and the abortion clinics are closed, 90%, 95% of all the issues that were raised earlier about criminality, about coercion, will be gone. And the remaining problems, all of this energy spent for life will be transferred to the living. Thank you, Larry. 
all sweet to hold Larry. a newborn hey, Larry. babe. I, I'm so sorry, sir. I can't let you do that. Your testimony, I, I'm sorry. I, I've got to have you sit down and offer testimony okay, to the committee. Can we can't have, as much as I would have loved to have heard that song. Um, you sing? We have to have you offer testimony to the committee, sir. No. Okay, how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives. Because he lives, they can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because we know he holds their future. And life is worth the living and fighting for because he lives. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, and I'm sure it would have been beautiful had you said that. Stay, stay seated if you can. Wait just a sec. Uh, Laura, um, if you'll go, um, you'll state your name and your affiliation, your position on the bill. Hi, my name is Laura McGregor, and I am representing myself testifying in favor of the 1896 to abolish abortion in Texas without amendment. Um, I had this big old speech plan, but I wanted to let you know I go to the abortion clinic with SIMS, and I uh, they are so encouraging. I can't tell you, those kids get up Saturday mornings, they don't go watch cartoons, they go and plead with women to not kill their babies. How somebody can look in their eyes and flip them off and just walk in those doors doing what they're about to do, that is monstrous. I don't know how somebody could do that. Those kids are so sweet, they are so dedicated, we just had the horror house out here. It's very encouraging to see them all. See their testimonies. I don't know how you can't be encouraged by that. These kids, these, these women are not, by and large, victims. They go in there laughing. They go in there um, angry at you. Um, nobody, people offer help, and they refuse it. Um, I, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Chair calls Fred Brew, Savoya Nelms, Rebecca Long, and Damaris Tudor. The next panel will be Mandy Harris, Deborah Nelms, Harry Hubert, and Janet Magana. Um, Fred, let's start with you. Chairman, members, my name is Fred Gruby. I'm representing myself in the Polk County Republican Party, and I'm for the bill. I came here today skeptical that y'all were serious about this bill. But Chairman Leach, I'm now wholeheartedly convinced that you are for it. And for that, I'm truly grateful. So let's address what seems to be y'all's greatest concern, the fact that the bill holds women criminally liable. This bill punishes no one for things done in the past. Once the bill passes, it will go like this. Texas will declare to all that abortion is no longer allowed in this state. Texans will be informed that anyone caught engaging in the taking of a preborn life will be subject to the same exact penalty as though the life were a day old or a week old. So when somebody ignores all that and still seeks out an abortion, is this really the person that y'all are going to concern yourselves with? when it comes time to pass this out of committee? I don't think that it is. And for that, I thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Members, questions? Okay, uh, Tavoya Nelms. I don't think Tavoya's here. Rebecca Long. Hello, my name is Rebecca Long. I'm representing myself and testifying for this bill. I believe that all life is precious, whether inside the room or outside the room, whether young or old, strong or weak. This bill protects both the unborn lives and liberties equally. If we are okay with taking the life of, some, of someone in the womb, what will we be okay with next? Taking the life of those who are not as intelligent or as strong as us? It is God who is the author and finisher of life. In Jeremiah, it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated and in Exodus it says, you shall not murder. God has created every single one of us and put us here for a reason. And one day each of us will be held accountable for what we have done. 
I don't want to be held accountable for allowing the lives of millions of children to be taken. My name is Damaris Tudor. I am representing myself and I am testifying for this bill. I would like to say that I am so thankful that HB 896 is getting this hearing. I feel that it, I feel that it is more truly pro-life than any other bill that has been put forward in Texas in the past. I feel strongly that this bill brings glory to God in the way that it protects the unborn, lending equal protection to both the born and unborn citizens of Texas. I hope that you will keep that in mind. I've always been shocked and confused by the fact that men who are prosecuted for killing their children, that men are prosecuted for killing their children, while women walk away scot-free. Women aren't stupid, they know what they're doing. Murder should always have consequences, regardless of which parent decided to follow through, and regardless of the excuses the parents come up with in order to try and justify their horrific behavior. As a woman, I, how would I be motivated to keep, that, to keep from having an abortion if I knew I could get away with it? There should always be consequences for sin and wrongdoing. I feel that strongly. I would like to close with this verse in Amos that came to mind while I was preparing for today. Hate evil, love good, and establish justice in the gate. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Damaris. We really appreciate the testimony that's ever to the end of the <coughs> Thank you. All right, the chair calls Mandy Harris, Deborah Nelms, Terry Hubert, Terry, come on up. Janet Magana. Okay, they might be in the overflow room, and uh, so we'll give them time to get over here. But Harry, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman Leach, and um, I just want to thank all of you for putting in a long day and not done yet. But um, sincerely, I have things prepared. Everybody's it's been said. I'm, I'm a uh, first off. I'm uh, representing myself. I'm here in support of HB 896 uh, from Spring Branch. Um, I volunteer with a pro-life uh, group. We go to the abortion clinics. We also go to the college campuses. We go with posters that graphically show what abortion does to an unborn child. And um, we have uh, seen uh, women change their minds that were uh, planning to have an abortion. And so that is what keeps us going. Um, in, the, in the battle to save babies, precious babies. I have six children, six grandchildren, and um, I just implore you to keep doing, keep this bill going and have um, Texas be an example for the rest of the nation of what we should be doing. And just thank you so much for what you're doing pray for you guys. Thank you for the courage that you had to take it this far. And just let's keep it going. Thank you, Perry. Thank you for your testimony. Members of the questions. Thanks. Um, is Mandy Harris here? Deborah Nelms? Or Janet Magana? Okay, our next panel is going to be Ashley Valdez, April Ross, Kendra Albright, and Barbara Ziegler. Need folks to be uh, be ready, be on your feet. Um, if you can, tell me your name. Tell me your name again. Ashley Valdez. Okay, Ashley. Thank you. Hang on, just a sec. So April Ross, Kendra Albright, or Ashley Valdez. I'm Ashley. You're Ashley. I'm sorry. Or Barbara Ziegler. Okay, Nancy McPhee. Nancy, come on up. Jessica Garza. Jessica here. Okay, Jessica's on her way. And then Gabrielle Gonzalez. Okay, Ms. Valdez, if you'll go ahead. Hello, I'm Ashley Valdez. I'm a Christian wife and mother. I will be representing myself today, and I'm for this bill. I'm thankful for the opportunity to speak to you all today on behalf of the 40 to 50 million babies murdered every year. Please consider with me a time in America when it was legal to own a slave. 
Did that make it just simply because it was legal? No. Or the Holocaust when Jews were dehumanized so they were murdered. Now I want you to think about America today. Currently the law states that the unborn are not human and have no rights. If the mother doesn't want her baby, she can legally pay for someone to murder her child. Majority of abortions are not emergency situations for the mother's health, but rather for the mother's convenience. Of course it's dressed up in terms like women's rights and abortion, instead of calling it what it truly is, murder. Proverbs 24, 11, 12 states, rescue those being led away to death, hold back those staggering towards slaughter. If you say, but we knew nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he repay everyone according to what they have done? Ladies and gentlemen, God has placed you in the power of authority that you're in today, and you will be held accountable for your decision regarding this bill. Slavery was abolished in 1865. The end of the Holocaust was 1945. Let's make 2019 the year Texas goes down in history for abolishing abortion completely. No more regulations, no more innocent lives taken. I am pleading with you all today to uphold your duty and make passing this bill a priority. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ashley. What's your daughter's name? Faith. She's one. She's one. Thanks for being here, Faith. Uh, any questions? No. All right. Uh, Barbara Ziegler. Barbara Ziegler. I'm taking care of my grandson. Six weeks old. Um, hello, my name is Barbara Ziegler, and I live in Austin County, and I am representing myself on behalf of HB 896. Um, I believe many of you are sitting there tonight. Um, uh, making a decision, why did you want to become a legislator? I mean, that's probably a good question this time of night. Maybe you decided because you wanted to make a difference in other people's lives. I mean, maybe that was your choice. Or perhaps you wanted to right a wrong. Or see that justice prevails. Only you know the reason why you decided to become a legislator. Well, um, today is the day you can make all those things happen. You've heard all that you need to hear. You've heard the death. You've heard the horror. You've heard the powerful testimonies. I heard them too. I, I just looked at this and thought, go out the door. Because there was nothing I could say that these folks had not already said. I was just dumbfounded as well as you all as well. So I hope that you didn't decide to become a legislator because you thought it would be an easy job. Because I don't envy any of you that are sitting here right now. Because you're going to need God's courage. And you're going to need God's strength. Because you've got some very difficult decisions to make, and I think one of the biggest decisions is this particular bill, and voting on bills like this. You know, this is definitely not for whims. So, you have to decide what to do, and we pray that it is the right decision. Um, we ask that you do your duty, and you need to take the leadership. I mean, you're, you're elected officials because people saw that you were leaders, so I encourage you to do that. So let this bill go to the House for a vote. I encourage you to abolish abortion for good. And I want to finish quickly with Deuteronomy 13, 3, 4. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. For you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and hold fast to him. Thanks for listening and praying in your time. you got a hard job, and I encourage you to make good choices. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? My name is Nancy McPhee. Nancy McPhee, okay. Thank you, Nancy. I am. Okay, you know what? Uh, can I go back real quick? Yes, uh, sir. Right back. Barbara, did you give us your name? Uh, I did. Your well, position on the bill? And Barbara represent Ziegler representing myself on behalf. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm Nancy McPhee. I'm representing myself, and I am for this bill. And uh, I believe if Norma McCorvey, a.k.a. Jane Rowe, were standing here today, she would be for this bill also, as she has given her life to the Lord, and she did uh, advocate for pro-life before she died. And she would want to be saved by baby. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McPhee. Appreciate the testimony. Anybody? Thank you all, especially Faith for hanging in there. Yeah, appreciate y'all. All right, our next panel is Jessica Garza, Gabrielle Gonzalez, Joshua Garza, and Karen Sanchez. Did we... Figure 
it out. But with the newborn, you're not used to sleeping anyway, so this is all. <laughs> Jessica? Yes, sir. Hey, Jessica. Hi. Go ahead. My name is Jessica Grinder. I am representing myself and I'm testifying for HB 896. I am first and foremost a Christian. In Exodus 20, 13, the sixth commandment of the Lord, you shall not murder. This is a bare minimum of what we should be doing in the state of Texas, and we have it. You have the authority right now to delegate and institute, institute the foundation of abolishing the murders of babies in the state of Texas. This power and responsibility is given to you by the Lord. I also want to ask, where is the voice crying out for the fathers that have had to watch their sons and daughters be slaughtered and no one caring about their boys or wife? Let not the blood and death of the unborn United States citizen be on your hands on the day of judgment. A higher judgment of Jesus Christ is coming, and we are warning you to be on the side of righteousness and not destruction. I ask plead and beg of you to repent and believe the truth and pass this bill. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Albright? Hi, my name is Kendra Albright, and I'm testifying on behalf of myself, and I am for HB 896 to protect all life from conception. Uh, I believe only God has the right to govern the life of his creation, and I implore you to use your God-given authority to do what the word of God says is just and protect life. Um, our basis of morality must be the word of God or else it, it cannot stand and we are accountable to him. I am licensed by the state of Texas as a midwife to practice safely to protect babies in the womb, to care for women and newborns as well as uh, babies in the womb. Uh, midwifery law directs and pro prohibits certain actions with the purpose of protecting babies. While I deal solely with low-risk pregnancies, I have been trained in recognizing and handling medical complications. Life is rarely an either or, as was brought up earlier by a, an, uh, uh, an opposing view of the bill. Uh, there are so few complications that endanger the life of the mother that don't allow time for delivery. So that's really not a point that, that uh, is, is, it's just a new point from that perspective. Um, I am also licensed by the state of Texas as a foster parent. Uh, during this past year, my husband and I have had 11 children come in and out of our home. Um, this, as somebody stated earlier, these are the children that are the are at risk for being aborted, and these every single one of them has been so precious. Not uh, on the one hand, yes, by it is a God-given statement that we are made in His image, and just you can see for yourself, these children deserve to live. These children deserve a chance. Um, I, I believe me when I say there are plenty of Texas regulations uh, regarding uh, foster care and. and taking care of children, and I urge you to do the same for pre-born babies as well. Uh, these are some, these are children that some would say do not deserve life, but please give them a chance. Please pass this bill. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Joshua. Joshua. Right. <coughs> so, Mr. Chairman, the committee, uh, I want to start by thank you all for your endurance and y'all's patience and utmost uh, respect today. It's been displayed and kind of baffled at this point. I've never come this high in government, so to see that, it, it is encouraging. So I know you all want to get home to y'all's families, as well do we, and I want to honor your 60-second rule, but I made this about 12 hours ago, and I've been up for 28 hours at this point, so I don't think I have focus at that time, but uh, I'll try to make it short. <laughs> so my name is Joshua Garza. Um, I am rep I am uh, representing myself, and I am for House Bill 896. I'm here to speak on behalf of those who cannot speak for themselves, um, infants in the womb are being murdered in our country daily, around 55,000 per year in our state alone. Our moral compass has been inverted, so my plea for you all today is to do that which is good, to uphold justice, to yield the sword rightly, and to punish the evildoers, to no longer allow the slaughter of thousands of children in our state, to no longer regulate the murder of the unborn, but to abolish and criminalize it entirely. In short, to do the job God puts you in power to do. Make no mistake, your decision today will be recorded in the books of heaven. Jesus Christ 
The Lord of Lords said as a final message, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. So I implore you this day to trust in Christ and live. Do your duty. Pass this bill and make history today by establishing the value of the image of God as something you will not compromise on and set the example for other states to follow. Defend those defenseless in the womb. Uphold the Constitution. Ignore Roe and let, let it not be said of you that, that you were besought by the people, that they were pressed to pass this bill, but they hardened their hearts, stiffened their neck, and shut their ears to the cries of injustice and warnings of judgment. Fear God, not man. Pass this bill and clear conscience, clear, clear consciences by the precious blood of Christ, by faith in him. Thank you. representing myself, I'm testifying for HB 896. Texas already validates the unborn as human, and we already have a heartbeat bill. Thank you for that. I am now urging you to go a step further by abolishing abortion altogether, which is the best and complete way to protect the unborn. Please throw out political correctness. Fear God. Continue to do it big in Texas. Be the first state to abolish abortion by properly and correctly protecting the unborn. Thank you for your kind consideration. Sharon, thank you for your Carol Davis, okay. Uh, the chair calls Charles De La Durante. And Esther De La Durante. Charles and Esther, make your way here. Um, Ms. Ross, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Um, hello, my name is April Ross, and I'm testifying for HB 
What's his name? Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan. Jonathan, come on up as well. Okay, Carol, go ahead. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Carol Davis, and I appreciate you staying this long. It's been a really long day for all of us. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I represent myself, and I am for this bill. Uh, I'm a grandmother. I care about my granddaughters, <coughs> and I just I, I care about our country. I'm concerned with our country. So I, I just made a real short little thing, and I thought it was supposed to be just real, you know, not too too religious or anything. But I am a Christian. I, I love the Lord. But that's you know. This would work for anybody. Okay, so anyhow, all people are valued, especially our littlest citizens, the pre-born. Roe versus Wade went into effect in 1973. We were not as well educated of the science of pregnancy. I certainly didn't know that much about it. I, they didn't do sonograms back when I had my kids in, in the 70s. They weren't doing that unless you were over 40 and you might have a chance to have some sort of health issue. So it wasn't common practice. So we didn't know what these babies looked like. We didn't know if we were going to have a boy or a girl. Things are different. We've come a long way, baby. Okay, in <laughs> science. So I was just thinking, we just, we just, these pre-born -born babies, they are, they are just as valued as the babies that are a year old or three years old or any, any child or any adult. They're valued. And so we've come a long way in science, so I feel like we need to update our, this law. This law needs to be abolished. So anyhow, there's no reason to continue this barbaric murdering of children. And like she mentioned, our God commands us, thou shalt not murder. So we need to stop this insanity and Texas today. Thank you, Carol. Um, Esther. Della Durante? Close. Della Durante. <laughs> Della Durante. I would have gotten it right earlier. Uh, Della Durante. Esther, go ahead. So I'm here testifying in favor of the bill, 896. And I know a lot of people already spoke, but I just want to encourage the committee to vote it out. And millions of babies are uh, murdered each year. And I really feel like let's make Texas the first state to say no. <laughs> Thank you, Esther. And just to be clear for the record, are you from Texas, Texas? No. What's the, what city are you from? Blue Ring. Say it again? Blue Ring. Okay. We're going to correct you. He does say Texas, Texas. I didn't know there was a city named Texas. That would be the best place on earth. <laughs> Seriously, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, I want to move there. Uh, okay, so. Texas. Okay, and Charles is not here. Is that right? Okay, but Jonathan? Yes, sir. Yes. All right, Jonathan, go ahead. Um, yes, uh, my name is Jonathan DeLaudorante, and um, I'm here to represent myself, and I'm testifying in support of um, HB 896, and uh, I think would encourage you all to vote for it, and that uh, we can get this moved on to the House, and we can get it voted on. Um, I'm not going to say anything you know, there's nothing new under the sun. There's been a lot of people here talking and uh, a lot of encouragement. And I just pray that you all would make the right decision. So, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, John. Any members, any uh, questions for the panel? All right. Thank you. Um, you thank you. All right. All right. The chair calls uh, Steve Slate, Lizette Guajardo, Tyler Weedman. Roxanne Hollingsworth, Steve Slate, Lizette Guajardo, Tyler Reedman, and Roxanne Hollingsworth. The next panel will be Bob Jarash, Betty Taylor, Andy Taylor, and Cindy Solis. What, what's your name, ma'am? Are you Roxanne? You're Roxanne, Hollingsworth. okay. And then Lizette. Okay, is Steve Slate here? No, he's gone. He's not here? Okay, what about Tyler Reedman? Or wife not here? Bob Jarash? Joe Rash? Betty Taylor? Andy Taylor? 
All right, why don't we, they might be coming over from the overflow room. Um, Ms. Hollingsworth, let's start with you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hello, Chairman and committee members. Thank you for spending so many hours listening to repetitious <laughs> testimony. <laughs> Uh, but my name is Roxanne Hollingsworth, and I live in Dallas County. And uh, I just want to say that uh, I am representing myself and that I am for this bill. <coughs> the 14th Amendment states in part that no state shall make or enforce any laws which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. An estimated 55,000 babies are killed by abortion every year in Texas. This bill merely provides for the equal protection under the law for all living persons, born and unborn. I respectfully submit my testimony today for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hollingsworth. Thank you so much. Um, Lizette Wajardo? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Hi, my name is Lizette Wajardo. I represent myself in wholehearted support of this bill. The heinous act of murder through abortion is often attempted to be justified on the contingencies of a baby not being wanted, loved, or provided for enough. The reality is that we live in an imperfect world tainted with great pain, suffering, and heartbreak. To say that the endurance of hardships makes these children's lives worthless is to say that no one person here is worthy to be alive. We need to open our eyes, stop lying to ourselves, and bring an end to this horrific act of evil. Each of you know that this is wrong. Your conscience bears witness to this. James 4.17 says, whoever knows the right thing to do, yet fails to do it, is guilty of sin. You have the ability to help stop this atrocity and abolish the great evil of abortion. Will you continue to sit on your hands and do nothing? Or will you do everything in your power to make right what is wrong? Thank you. Thank you, Lizette. Um, and just to be clear, you're here on behalf of yourself for the bill. Yes. Okay, and Ms. Hollingsworth, I need to come back to you to clarify the record. Um, you're here on behalf of... Um, oh, your... I mobilized for him international, okay, and which you're... is my ministry. That's fine. Thank you. And yourself. Correct. And myself. And you're for the bill. And I am right, for the thank bill. Thank you. Members, any questions for the bill? All right. Thank you both. Thank you. Um, one more time. Is Steve Slate here? No. Okay. Tyler Reedman. <laughs> All right. Bob Jorash. <laughs> Betty Taylor. Andy Taylor. Are, are there still folks in the overflow room? How, yes. how many? Okay. Um, because we, we, we're starting to get room in this room now, and so if there's people who, over there in the overflow room who have registered to testify, um, if, if you can make your way over here, that just just so we can move this along a little more rapidly. I, I, don't, I don't want to skip over anyone that's en route from the overflow room. So Betty Taylor, Andy Taylor, Cindy Solis, Cynthia Dillard, Chad Welty, is it Ms. Dillard? Okay. Um, Chad Welty, uh, Cynthia Zotig, is that you ma'am? Cynthia? Okay, come on up. Anna Lenz. Anna Lenz. Okay. Julie Enriquez. Julie, come on up. Lisa Kane. Lisa here. Caleb Lenz, Kimberly Margison, Michelle Ibambi, 
Is that you, Michelle? All right. Tell me your name again, ma'am. Okay, Julie, come on up. Okay, so, Miss Diller, if you'll, if you'll go ahead. Hi, my name is Cynthia Diller, and I'm representing myself, and I'm for this bill. I'm supporting this bill as it is written, and I'm very thankful for this opportunity to stand for this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cynthia. And uh, your state representative is? Kyle Biederman. Representative Biederman <laughs> is here with us tonight. Representative Biederman, thank you. Representative Swanson, thank you. Um, and, I, and I do at this moment want to, Scripture tells us to give honor where honor is due, and um, I want to honor Representative Niave, you being sticking with us tonight, seriously, thank you so much for being here, and I want to point out the two staffers who are here with us, They've been sitting here faithfully all day, doing a great job, Cassidy, my chief clerk, and Sean, our deputy clerk as well. Zotai, and I represent myself, testifying for HB 896. Committee members, you swore to protect and defend. Please protect them, the most vulnerable among us. Each child murdered through abortion was unique and made in the image of God. These babies should be the future of this country. Instead, they are discarded as trash. And I agree this is genocide and a genuine domestic threat. If you fail to establish a valid standard of justice, who will be the next group of people deemed undesirable? Could it be conservative politicians or liberal politicians? And will you then be only worthy of death? I ask that you be the faithful few, obedient to God, save these babies, and you may be instrumental in also saving a nation, not from any future conflicts between citizens, but from the wrath of a holy and righteous God, who will bring a fury of judgment for the shedding of innocent blood, unless we repent and turn away from this wickedness. Please put this bill forward for a vote. Thank you. Hi, my name is Julie Enriquez. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying in support of this bill. Chairman Leach, members of the committee, I'm here to say that abortion hurts women in a deep and profound way because it goes against our innate sense to protect our young. I do not claim to be an expert, but I can tell you how abortion affected my life. When I was 10 years old, my mom died from breast cancer, which essentially left me orphaned. The doctor told my family that she developed breast cancer due to her abortion. Her death shattered my life. I didn't know she had an abortion until later in my life. Had I known this, I might not have had an abortion when I was 16. I was taken advantage of by a 23-year-old man and became pregnant. I went to Planned Parenthood for help, but the only choice I was given was abortion. And I was told that if I didn't schedule it that day, that it would cost more and could be more complicated. I felt pressured. Out of fear and ignorance, I capitulated. I didn't think I had a choice. I wasn't given a choice. After my abortion, I tried to shove it down and not think about it. But no one told me how abortion would shatter what was left of my life and the long-term emotional trauma that I would suffer. I began to drink heavily. I experienced low self-esteem, depression, guilt, self-destructive behavior, suicidal thoughts, and I even attempted to take my own life. My abortion negatively impacted every relationship in my life. I'm happy to say that I was able to find healing through a personal encounter with Jesus Christ at a post-abortion retreat called Rachel's Vineyard. I wish my experience after abortion was the exception and not the norm, but I have talked with so many women who experienced similar symptoms when I had the privilege to facilitate those same retreats. Yeah. I'm here to say that abortion hurts women, and I ask you to please put this uh, bill out for a vote to protect women. 
Caleb Lenz, come on up. Is Lisa Kane here? Um, Kimberly Marvison. Kimberly, are you here? Paul Fancher. Abigail Ab <laughs> Gush, Abigail Gush. Okay. Tell Abigail I got her name right. Um, <laughs> Mary Smith. She's an overflow. Okay, Mary, make your way on over if you can. Okay. Um, okay, Anna, let's start with you. Thank you very much. My, hello, my name is Anna Lentz, and I am for the still HB 896. I am representing myself. Every man and woman has been given a conscience. It's the same conscience that tells us lying, stealing, and murder are all wrong. I would argue that this same conscience also speaks to each man and woman, whether pro-life or pro-choice, that the unborn child has equal rights as any other living human being to do anything but abolish abortion completely gives men and women an excuse to deny what we all know to be true. Abortion is murder. I'd also like to say that uh, seeing this little girl on my ultrasound, when uh, she would have been at an age that's legal to abort, um, I saw her stretching <coughs> and moving, and there's really something special about that tiny little stage where you see those tiny little babies. So all life is important. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, usually they always turn off their bikes when they do that. <laughs> it's late, so. Right. Susanna Jane, and this is our other daughter, Elaine Marie. We're glad y'all are here. Um, okay, Caleb. Caleb, go ahead. Uh, 
Hello, my name is Caleb Lenz. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying for this bill. Many of the people here tonight have taken upon themselves the difficult and somewhat frustrating task of trying to formulate an argument for something that actually is self-evident. That is that human life inside the womb is intrinsically valuable. So rather than dwell on this fact, I would like to simply go on to asking you to be men and women who take action for those who cannot, remembering that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. But I ask, are we good men and women if we do nothing? Hello, my name is Paul Fancher. I represent myself and I am for this bill. I would like to start by pointing out something that is worth noting since there have been so many references to the words of God this evening. And that is, as of, we've already looked at your oath of, oaths of office three or four times now, I'd like to look at them one more time and focus on the last four words. As you do all that you do, you do it, so help you God. In hard questions like this, it makes complete sense. And in, indeed, it's indisputable that you should turn to God, who gave life, to learn and to know more about what you should do with that life and how you should act and what laws you should put in place for that life. Look now with me at what God said to Noah. For your lifeblood, I will require a reckoning. From every beast, I will require it, and from man. From his fellow man, I will require a reckoning for the life of man. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For God made man in his own image. Thank you, Paul. Mary Smith. Hi, my name is Mary Smith, and I am the North Texas Area Director for Concerned Women for America. We are a public policy organization that is nationwide, and we stand for sanctity of human life. Last year, I had the privilege of mentoring two young women, both new mothers, both beautiful. And I also had the privilege of working in a pregnancy center. And one of the young women that came in was trying to decide whether she was going to end her pregnancy or not. I mentioned her to these two young women that I mentored, and they nodded understanding, and they were very sympathetic. But for the first time, they did see something that they had not <laughs> expected to see. As new mothers themselves, they knew that this lady was caring in her womb. They saw that her decision was not just for herself. A week later, I had to tell them that she decided to make that decision and she aborted her baby. These two young women put their heads down and wept. One of them told me that she had always, all her young life, been told the woman's choice was what was important. They had never considered the baby. But now, after having their own children, they knew they had bought a lie. Abortion on demand cheapens the life of the unborn child, and we in this country are making a mistake when we say that it is right for convenience and we can cover mistakes. I am here today to ask you to do something that's going to be hard, it's going to be difficult, and it's going to take a lot of boldness. I am asking you to remove the law that normalized what is abnormal and abusive and destroys life. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Members, questions for the bill? Uh, thank you, each of you. Thanks, Mom. Mama, get that. Okay, Matthew Newland. He's not here. He's not here. Jason Nurnberg. Jason Nurnberg, Daniel Blair, Peter Maggio, you Peter? Okay, come on up. Uh, Adam, Adam, come on up. Yuri Popko, if I say your name, Yell at me, Yuri Popko. He's in the other room. Okay, if you'll get him and then Nikki Kelton. I bet uh, Diana Popko is still here too. So if you'll, if she's here, if she'll come over with uh, with Yuri, that'd be great. Okay. Um, 
Peter? Yes, sir. Okay, Peter, go ahead. My name is Peter Maggio. I am representing myself, and I'm speaking in favor of this bill. Since 1973, there have been over eight Supreme Court decisions concerning abortion. Each one has in some way either enhanced or inhibited access to abortion. Most of these cases upheld the same basic premise that was established in Roe versus Wade, that women have a right to have an abortion prior to the point of viability, and the state can restrict this right past post-viability, as long as it doesn't impose undue burdens on women. The problem with this is that the point of viability is largely contested, leading to laws on the books restricting abortions as early as six weeks to late in the third trimester. It is clear that the Supreme Court's decision, decisions have not actually led to proper interpretation of the law. Therefore, it is time for us to clarify the law, to remove the ambiguity and no uncertain terms. This law will set into motion litigation, the litigation process that should have occurred in the first place in 1973. When a law is not clear, it should be changed to make it clear. Lastly, there are those that would oppose this law, saying that it will set back the pro-life cause if it is passed. To those people, I say this. It is time that we realize that the, that the time will never be perfect. This process will always be difficult and have a small chance of success. So it is time for us to act and trust in the goodness of this great nation. Should we succeed, we will save the lives of millions. And while failure may lead to setback, we must realize that setback is a risk we will always face and forge onward anyway. Thank you. Peter, um, Diana? Mr. Chairman? Yes, yes, Representative Gabby. So you live in Dallas, I see. Yes, ma'am. In House District 107. Um, we live in House District yeah. 107. <laughs> <laughs> your address. So I just want to thank you for coming to testify today. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. while strolling through the Capitol today that there was a statue called the Texas Pioneer Woman in honor of the early women settlers of Texas. Many of you have probably walked it, past it countless times and have never really pondered on it, I suspect. And you might ask, what's so remarkable about a statue of a modestly dressed woman holding a newborn child in her arms against a strong opposing wind. I bet almost anyone who would take the time to look upon her would be struck with a natural sense of amazement or awe <coughs> of the pose she is despite the hardships faced. There is an implied sense of achievement for having preserved and caring for this helpless child she holds. Now fast, fast forward to today, would our modern day equivalent of the statue be a career woman holding a briefcase, proudly pursuing her ambitions in life, sacrificing her children for abortion if they got in the way? Every abortion is <coughs> demeaning to women. It implies she is incapable of handling the hardships that we face in life and not suited to handle our God-given duties and privileges. I reject such a narrative. Don't try to use female victimhood as an excuse not to abolish abortion. Ending infanticide will not make women criminals. It will help them rediscover <coughs> their identity and continue the legacy of the pioneer women. Thank you. and I represent my family. I was born in a country that doesn't exist anymore because it thought that God was irrelevant. Uh, that is the USSR, or Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, which occupied my homeland at that time, Ukraine. It was the first time, or the first in the modern world to legally recognize a right to abortion. And 70 years later, it collapsed, and uh, we now live in Texas. <laughs> I heard
heard that this was the most independent state with a history full of courageous folks who had an active faith and weren't afraid to oppose tyranny. I believe y'all already know and have uh, heard today about the scientific evidence, the moral implications, and legal uh, considerations surrounding abortion. I can add this wisdom from scripture, which I believe addresses your duty as magistrates. Quote, uh, because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily, the heart of people is fully set uh, to do evil. This law would be a deterrent. It all comes down to this. Are you all ready to do the right thing as men, as uh, fathers, as Texans, or not? There will come a day when we will be telling about an era of legalized infanticide that began here in 1973 until a just state stopped this socialist experiment. It is my hope that it would be the Republic of Texas. <laughs> Con, blog of the website, Con Man's Musings, testifying in favor of the bill. Um, we hear a lot of phrases a lot of the times around this building, and typically they tend to be used as euphemisms, uh, but in this case I actually think that they are somewhat apt. Um, people in this building love to talk about starting the conversation and multi-session processes. And I don't know what's gonna happen with this bill. I think given where we are in the session, everyone can agree that getting this passed the, to the governor's desk will be challenging at best. But you have to start somewhere. And so Chairman Leach and Representative Tinderholt, I really wanna thank the two of you for getting this ball rolling. Um, who knows what's going to happen, but you need to start somewhere. And so you filed the bill last session, and we're getting a hearing on it now. You are the chairman, and you are holding the hearing. And I think that this is a big step in the right direction. I think that one day, this is one of the nights we will look back on that really made a difference in terms of just ending this abomination in our country. Thank you, Adam. Um, and just to be clear, you're here on behalf of Commons Musings. Mm -hmm. you're, you're for the bill. Yes, right. and I, I, I will say that the gentleman to, by uh, sitting to my side uh, talked about. Adam, you can say to your right. I know you don't believe anyone else is to your right. He was talking about his, his, uh, leaving socialist republics to come to the state of Texas. And I mean, I, I just, I was about to say that about New York. <laughs> <laughs> Members, any questions for the panel? All right, thanks to all. Thank you. All right, the, um, the chair calls. Is, is there anyone that made their way over from the overflow room that I called earlier? Okay. Chair calls Sarah Covey. Sarah? Okay. Um, Nikki Kelton? Rachel Walton, Lisa Park, and Dana McElvain. Okay. And then the next uh, panel will be Abigail Gervais, Sarah Allison, Karen Fry, and Levi Hopkins. Sarah? All right, go ahead. Hi, Mr. Chairman and committee members. My name is Sarah Covey. I am representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. In 2016, the Imperial College of London revealed a study they had done on the psychological impact of early miscarriages. That is the natural abortion a woman goes through when she is losing a pregnancy. The results showed that 4 in 10 women experienced PTSD symptoms, and 40% cited various negative emotional issues. I have miscarried six times. The emotional trauma is very real. So my question to you is this. Why are we allowing the murder of babies and the ability to end pregnancies? 
It is killing the child, as well as causing great emotional distress on the mother. In both a miscarriage and an abortion, the end is the same, the death of a child. One is elective and one is not. Miscarriages are surrounded by grief and abortions are celebrated. This should not be the case. So I plead with you, out of love for these innocent children, as well as the mental and emotional health of these women, will you please support this bill and abolish abortion in the state. Um, before I start, I'd like to thank you all so much for your patience and for um, allowing all of us to talk. Hi, Mr. Chairman and committee members. My name is Rachel Walton. I am representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. Supporting this bill may be placing yourself at the front line for criticism, but the support of this bill ultimately honors God. So I ask for you to be strong and to not waver. I ask you to support the abolition of abortion in Texas, and I ask all this out of love for these babies who do not have a voice to speak for themselves, out of love for the mothers and the fathers who will live with guilt for the rest of their lives, out of love for you, committee, for it is God who raises up rulers and authority, and it is God who has put you in authority, and when you die, and you stand before God to give account for all you have done. I do not want you to stand before God, the just judge, who will execute judge judgment as an aid to the act of murder. Soften your hearts and have courage, knowing that God will honor your obedience to him. Thank you so much for, for your time. First of all, I just want to say thank you to all of you that are here um, for giving this bill its hearing, um, especially you, Chairman Leach, for presiding over it, and Representative Tinnerholt for bringing this proposal forward, and then also James White for, uh, for co-authoring it. I greatly appreciate that. Um, my name is Lisa Park. I'm here representing myself, and I'm speaking in support of House Bill 896. Um, I am mostly, this, I've never done one of these things before, and this has been such a wonderful experience for me as an Austinite, as a Texan, seeing so many of my fellow Texans rally around this, and I've been greatly encouraged hearing those of you uh, on the committee speak about it, and the questions have been really intelligent. Uh, I would like to ask, may I ask you if you had concerns about the uh, criminalization aspect of it regarding women? Have those been addressed? Just for the sake of those after me who may be rewriting. <laughs> no, it, it, just, just go ahead and okay. keep going on your testimony. It's all helpful. Um, but mainly that's it, is that I am so proud to see Texas leading the way in this historic movement to abolish abortion completely and to uphold the Constitution providing equal protection to all life before and after birth and equal justice uh, in, you know, for all who would threaten it. That's the proper duty and function of the government and I am really pleased to see that we've got uh, a group of people here that you know, have legislators with the character and strength of mind to fulfill it. Um, and if I've got a little time left, I'll just add, I used to be pro-choice, and what changed my mind is I thought, well, I don't want the government interfering. What changed my mind was realizing, no, that's the job of the government, is to protect the innocent. What's at stake here is the actual baby. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is it Dana? Dana McElvain. Okay, go ahead, Dana. My name's Dana McElvain. Um, I'm a registered nurse, I'm a Republican precinct chair. I was a delegate to the 2018 Republican convention where we put abolish abortion as a priority plank. I'm speaking for myself in support of HB 896. Uh, I prepared my testimony, but it's all kind of been said already. Uh, there's not too much more to say. But I do want to thank each one of you for being here and for giving this a hearing. That in itself is a miracle for me. Um, we left, my husband and I left home at four o'clock this morning, so I feel your pain, and we still have to go home tonight because we're ranchers and we've got animals to take care of. So um, 
I do want to quote Abby Johnson who said, never in the history of mankind has a woman ever delivered a cat or a dog. It's always a baby and it's always delivered, either dead or alive. And I believe that to be true. Tonight in Texas is a historical moment for not only Texas, but for the nation. Roe versus Wade opened the door to abortion and it happened and started in Texas. Tonight, HB 896 is going to hopefully close the door to abortion in Texas and will be the role model for the nation. You all don't, each one of you individually have to have all the answers. I know you have concerns about decriminalization for women, but your job, I believe, is to listen to the preponderance of the testimony and let that preponderance lead you to advance this bill to the floor for a full vote. Let it have the light of day and let each one of your colleagues have a voice. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, members, any questions? Thanks to each of you and safe travels home tonight. Chair calls Abigail Gervais. Abigail, you here? Okay, come on up. Sarah Allison, Aaron Fry, is it Aaron? Aaron, Aaron, okay. Is it Levi Hopkins? Levi? Okay. Uh, the next panel is going to be Mason Morrison, <coughs> Darrell McElveen, <coughs> Teresa Ann Bond, and Becca Peterson. Hello, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Abby Gervais. I'm representing myself, and I'm here testifying for HB 896. <coughs> Thank you so much for having this hearing, Chairman Lake. My first son turned six weeks old yesterday. The journey of becoming and being his mother has not been easy. In fact, it has been and is very, very hard, physically, mentally, and emotionally. However, knowing that I, as his mother, my sacrifices gave life to another human being makes it all worth it. Abortion not only kills people made in the image of God, it also robs women of being able to be mothers. Make sacrifices as mothers. Feel the joy of holding your baby. It is unjust to unborn babies that they can be really murdered. It is unjust to mothers that the law allows them to kill their children. I would ask the committee to allow this bill to pass out of committee. Do what is right for the Lord and Texans, especially the unborn children and their mothers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And did you get that <coughs> book today? I did. So if you if you haven't seen this, can you can you bring it up here real quick? Sure. Thank you. Hey, can you up? So, so this is available in our bookstore for those of you who want it. This is the official Texans guide to the other forty nine states. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, Sarah Allison. Sarah, go ahead. Um, my name is Sarah Allison. I'm representing myself. I'm here to speak for HB 896. Unlike every other bill on the topic of abortion that has come through the Texas House, this bill treats women as intelligent people capable of making moral decisions. Every abortion related law exempts women from the consequences of breaking that law. And it's defended with reasons like women don't know any better, or they're going to break the law anyway, and women are victims. What I'm supposed to be a victim of, nobody says. But somehow, the entire female population are victims, and therefore can't be responsible for our actions. Texas law already defines a person as a human being who is alive, including unborn children at every stage of gestation, from fertilization until birth. If a father were to kill his unborn child, he would be charged with homicide. Yet if a mother kills her unborn child, you say she shouldn't be held to the same standard. Just as we are fighting for equal protection under the law for the unborn, it is equally necessary to have equal justice for those who break the law. We should not have one consequence for men and another for women. Moral right is not determined by our gender. Please give women the respect that they deserve, and I welcome the abortion completely by including HB 89. Aaron. This 
My name is Aaron Fry. Uh, I am a pastor at Grace Family Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. Um, I thank you for this opportunity to testify. Um, I am for House Bill 896. Uh, I believe the bill is good as it is, um, without any exception. I think it's necessary to have it in the wording as it is if we're going to be honest with ourselves about uh, the value of human life beginning at conception. I want to read a, a quick verse, Psalm 139, verse 16. It says, your eyes, being God's eyes, your eyes saw my unformed, my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. Now, I believe this testifies clearly to the value that God places on us at the moment of conception, because he marks it in his timeline of our lives. Now, I understand that a primary concern at this point is uh, the, the women that have had an abortion and that received care through many of these ministries that we've heard tonight, and they're terribly heartbreaking stories. I would just ask the committee to understand and, and consider the fact that the law would greatly reduce that number from even existing. Uh, Levi Hopkins. My name is Levi Hopkins. I'm a licensed peace officer in the state of Texas. My opinions are my own. They do not represent my department in any way. I represent myself. I am supporting this bill. In the penal code, the definition of an individual, individual means a human being who is alive including an unborn child at every stage of gestation from fertilization until birth. <clears throat> Capital murder is the taking of the life of an individual under the age of 10. So in our state, we already have the laws in place where it is capital murder, the highest chargeable offense in the state of Texas, punishable by death or life imprisonment. But we've got these exceptions in here for licensed physicians, if it's their intention to commit that offense. If it's not their intention, if it's an accident in the procedure, then it becomes an offense. There's confusion in the laws, and it needs to be cleared up. That needs to be removed. These exceptions where a mother can do something that a father can't do. A father, if he doesn't want to accept the responsibility of his child, and slips pills into a drink and takes the life of his child, it's capital murder. A mother, if she slips a pill, doesn't want to ac accept responsibility, down her throat, takes the life of an individual, it's fine, pat on the back. In law enforcement, how can we, how can we say this is just? Our hands are tied or we're forced to be unjust in our dealings with the, the people in Texas. So I want Texas to stand up. I want us to stand against the overwhelming pressure of, of the media, politics, federal, and uh, Supreme Court decisions. And let's call murder what it is. Let's call capital murder what it is. And the laws we have in place, let's uphold them and take out the exceptions. Actually, I have one more thing. Okay. <laughs> so, Let's not be like the Nazis in Nazi Germany, that at the end of the day, we say, hey, it was, it was our boss that told us to do it, so we're not guilty. If we, if we don't let this bill pass, and we don't remove these exceptions, we stand guilty. Let's wash our hands of the innocent blood of these children. Amen. panel will be Luke Densmore, Zara Arias, Seth Peterson, and uh, Alice Allison. Mason Morrison. Uh, I'm a United States Marine uh, from Huntsville, Texas. 
Uh, I'm here representing myself solely, uh, and I'm in favor of, of this bill. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, Chairman White, uh, you, you mentioned to us earlier that uh, us men need to be men. Um, I'm here before you today as a, a testament to the lack of rights that men, us men, have uh, in protecting the lives of, of our freeborn children. Um, in April of 2013, I drove my girlfriend at the time to the Planned Parenthood on Ben White Boulevard here in Austin uh, and assured her that, that it was all going to work out. Uh, I did so after several weeks of pleading with her uh, for my child's life. Um, while I didn't agree with her decision, I felt it my responsibility to not let her go through it alone as she was not alone in creating this child. Um, I will never forget the sound of her crying as we left that day. I have no doubt that I will see my child's face one day, but I can only hope that he or she is not nearly as ashamed of me as I am of myself. I implore you to vote this bill, this bill favorably out of this committee and give us fathers in the state of Texas some ground to stand on. Thank you for your time. Hi, I'm Teresa Ann Bond. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying for HB 896. When I was 18, I almost aborted my daughter. She was no less valuable then than she is now, almost 10 years later. There were no laws protecting my daughter from my own selfish decisions. Had it not been for my Christian aunt who made me realize what a blessing my daughter was, she wouldn't be alive today. I was not an innocent victim. I knew it was wrong. But I would never have made that appointment had abortion been illegal, and I would have known that I would have faced punishment. Having a law that recognizes abortion as murder is good, but without punishment for that crime, the law would hold no weight. That's why HB 896 is a great bill. Please pass this bill, and thank you. Becca Peterson. My name is Becca Peterson. I am representing myself and testifying for HB 896. I'm from Houston and I work at a pregnancy center where we provide support for women throughout pregnancy and beyond. I'm asking you to support this bill that provides equal rights for unborn children. Your duty as legislators is not to regulate how murder is to be done, but to abolish it entirely. Those of you who claim to be Christians must obey God rather than men. You must call evil, evil, and punish evildoers accordingly. If killing an unborn child is wrong, then it is wrong for everyone involved, including the mother. I also believe, as we talked about earlier today, that those who force or who co coerce abortion should be punished accordingly. The writer of Proverbs says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. I also want to thank you, each of you, for being here and for listening to us and for your service. Thank you, Becca. Uh, Burrell. My name is Burrell McElvain uh, from uh, <coughs> Stevens County. We're about 200 miles north of here, and uh, I've, I've, uh, I'm retired from the military, from the Navy. I've also retired from higher education, and now I'm a farmer and rancher and really have to work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also in Health District 60, which is my claims district. But I want you to know my early work years, I spent most of my first 10 years in Southeast Asia in uh, Gulf and uh, Talking Gulf and in, in surrounding 
uh, countries. And when in 1973, when Roe v. Wade was announced by the Supreme Court, we had no idea what was going on, what effect it would have on our culture, because our sole source of information back then was the Navy Times. And for those of you that's been in the military, you know, the Army, Navy, or Air Force Times, that's, uh, that's pretty restrictive. No cell phones, no internet, no anything. But at that time, there was a huge battle going on in our culture, and I did not realize that until I was transferred back to Washington, D.C. Uh, in 1974 following that. And what I soon found out was everybody was putting their spin on that particular Supreme Court decision. That became not just the Supreme Court, but gee, they have opposed, they've made it law that it's legal to abort babies. But it wasn't the law, it was a judgment. And, uh, but I, I knew something was not right with myself because growing up in rural West Texas Range, I knew that you couldn't take something that was not alive, let it incubate for a few days or a few weeks, and suddenly it sprang to life. That just didn't make sense. Uh, I'm a strong believer in the Judeo-Christian ethic and for the biblical principles which our nation is founded. And, and uh, I, I firmly believe that God doesn't make mistakes. Each one here has been, uh, uh, have that, uh, regardless of how they were uh, conceived, they have a, a mission in their life. And I strongly want to ask you to support that because we have law, many laws on the books to support wildlife, the snail darter, the battle creek, silver shiner minna, and God help us, even certain varieties of rattlesnakes, which uh, it's inconceivable for me how we can have those laws on the books uh, pro protecting all the animals, and a lot of them that we really like, and we do not do anything for the unborn children. So I would encourage each of you uh, to search your heart and support this bill, pass it out of the committee, and, and let's get it on to the full house. Thank you, sir, for your time. Any, um, any questions? Thank you, and safe travels home tonight, too. Thank you. Um, the chair calls Luke Dinsmore, Zara Arias, Seth Peterson, Alice Allison. The next panel will be Kent Densmore. Where's Kent? Okay. Um, and Elizabeth, where's Elizabeth Densmore? Can I tell you what, um, Luke, why don't, why don't you step back? I'm gonna call you and your brother and sister up here together. Um, give me just a sec, buddy. So the next panel is going to be uh, Kent Densmore, Elizabeth Densmore, and Luke Densmore. Let's start with the three of you. What's your name, sweetie? Zara. Zara? Zara. Okay. Okay, put the mic up close to your face, and if you'll just tell us your name and your position on the bill. Hi, I'm Zara, and I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for HB 8. Mom has told me the story of how when I was a tiny baby in my mom's tummy, almost had, we almost had an abortion. But my mom's aunt helped her to know that I was a gift from God. Please um, pass this good bill so other babies have a chance to live. Almost an impossible case here, wouldn't you? So, to which the 
plaintiff attorney replied, I would have a very difficult case. In Roe, the high court stated, quote, if the suggestion of personhood is established, the appellant's case, of course, collapses, for the fetus's right to life would then be guaranteed. The appellant conceded as much, end quote. The Texas Penal Code is held for over 15 years as an unborn baby in person. By the logic of the Roe decision, this bill is long overdue. I also want to tell you guys how much we really appreciate all your hard work, your kindness to us this day, and that we are praying for you, that you will have wisdom in deliberating and come to a decision that gives honor to the Lord and for our country. Thank you. Amen. Howdy. My name is Seth Peterson from Houston, and representing myself, I'm here to testify for HB 896, which would apply equal protection of the law to little Texans still in the womb, made in the image of God. Regarding the culpability of women, this bill simply removes specific exceptions that explicitly allow and sanction abortion. It is impossible to legislate every situation, and it is for the courts and juries to weigh the facts of each case to determine the party responsible for the murder of the baby. A trafficked woman who is literally coerced into abortion has zero responsibility compared to the pimp or the abortionist. But if this bill is passed, pimps and abusers will no longer have legal, nice-looking facilities to hide their atrocities. A vote against this bill would feed right into their hands. Prostitution is illegal. Abortion should be too. Thank you. myself I'm for this bill and uh, I'm here today to plead for those who cannot plead for themselves. We hold the preamble of the Constitution. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that we are endowed with, by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just uh, der deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. We need to abolish the detestable practice of human abortion that has become destructive to the ends of these truths. Millions and millions of babies have been destroyed in ways which we find unjust for even the most infamous criminals sitting in prison with several life sentences. Answer the call. Do your duty unto God, unto the state of Texas, and unto its citizens born and unborn. Because we are equal from the moment of conception, which even before birth is when life truly begins. Abolish the board of murder in the state of Texas. Thank you. Good job. Luke. Hi, my name is Luke Jen 
Ms. Moore. <clears throat> I am here representing myself. I'm for House Bill 896. We have come today to call the men and women of this body to open your eyes to the evil that is happening each and every day across the state of Texas and across the United States of America. Since the practice of human abortion began to be regularly practiced in 1973 as a result of an unjust and flawed opinion given by the Supreme Court in the United States of the United States, over 60 million human lives have been unjustly taken, and that practice must stop. The Supreme Court's opinion is not law. Congress is the body of our government that establishes law. We call you today to abolish the awful practice of human abortion and make the state of Texas a place where all lives matter. Pass this bill and abolish abortion in Texas. Thank you. Thank you to all the gentlemen. Hold on just a sec. Representative Swanson. Apparently, you're all my constituents, as are several other of you. <laughs> Welcome to everyone from District 150, and thank you so much you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Go to cheer calls. Um, Robert Allison. Sue. Is it Sire? Did I get that right? So I've got Sue, David, and Michael Sire. Craig Seahack. <coughs> Craig Seahack is here. All right. Uh, Lee Allison. <laughs> Leah Allison. Chris Park. Leah Allison is here? Yeah, she's coming. She's coming from the overflow room? Yeah, she has a baby. Okay. All right. Um, all right, Amanda, go ahead. Thank you. My name is, my name is Amanda Fields. Um, for Jesus' mercy and grace, I am here. I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for this bill. From, con from conception, each child is a human being, an individual with separate DNA, and an identity completely separate and distinct from the mother, from his or her mother. And they are endowed by their creator with unalienable rights that must be protected by law. A father does not have the right to rape his child, and a mother does not have the right to kill her child. The child's individual rights must be protected. Without penalties, how is their protection? God gives life. It is always wrong to murder a human being, and these truths are self-evident. Each life is precious, abortion is never right, and should never be legal. Abortion is the willful destruction of precious human life. In cases such as rape or incest, abortion just enables the abuse, often allowing it to go undetected. Executing the victim's child does not heal the mother. We are responsible and willing to protect and help both victims, the mother and her child, find life and hope. And I just want to say that 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 unique individual can never be repeated. They can never be replaced. They have unfathomable value. And we're not dehumanizing the woman by humanizing her child. We're just acknowledging the reality of what already is. Folks, I gotta, we're, we're having a great hearing. <laughs> just gotta ask you to please keep the applause. Let's, let's all agree to applaud for the kiddos. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> okay, I nothing against your testimony. It was great, thank you so much, but, but I'm gonna be consistent and ask for no applause. Chris Park, Chris, go ahead. Hi, my name is Chris Park. I'm representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill, HB 896. 
So many support this bill and will support you as you lead a nation to turn from evil to good, to the light. So be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. This bill is not retroactive against women who've had abortions in the past and leaves due process of law and its lawful exemptions like duress, deficiencies, etc. intact. I know the pressure you're under concerning criminalizing women who have abortions, but in every case of murder, you prosecute everyone culpable. After watching several videos of ground-level abortion ministry, I can tell you the men and women who abort children say from their own lips they know they are killing their children. Clump of cells is a bygone argument. Ignorance is no defense. Other states unambiguously allow the death of children who survive attempted abortion, so there is no question. Neutrality is a myth. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Robert? Well, I would like to be the uh, first person to wish the committee a good morning. Um, <laughs> thank you for, for speaking with us. Uh, my name is Robert Allison, and I'm representing myself uh, uh, for this bill. Um, I'm speaking in strong support for this bill because it is the only bill that will completely outlaw abortion, which is the uh, murder of innocent people. Uh, that happens every day in Texas. Uh, you have an opportunity today uh, to make the final leap to stop uh, the shedding of innocent blood in our state. The Texas law defines life as being beginning at conception, and yet we have an exception clause in our penal code allowing doctors and mothers to murder innocent people. God calls you to do justice, to be God's minister for good, and to punish those who do evil. This bill punishes those who deprive the innocent the right to life. We would be horrified if a mother decided to kill her newborn baby, and we would rightly demand she be prosecuted under the laws of our state. This is how we need to view the murder of a 20-week-old baby, or a baby that is only one day old. The Supreme Court does not make the laws for Texas. That is your responsibility. I ask you to vote this bill out of committee, as is, without amendments that water it down. And I thank you again for your time. Thank you, Robert. Members, any questions? Okay, did Leah ever make it in? Leah, come on up. Don't worry about the, the baby. Don't worry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Leah Allison, and I'm representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. As a mother of three little boys, my baby is with me, she's also in my testimony um, today, and my other two needed childcare so I could be here today. And one word that I thought of was, to make it happen to be here, was how inconvenient it was to, this is so important to me to be here to testify for this bill in favor of it. And so, I was thinking about it, so to make sure my children are safe and well cared for in my absence was not convenient. And if I neglected my children, we have laws in place to protect children from parental abuse and negligence. However, we as Texans, uh, we have failed. what we have failed to do is to ensure equal protection under the law for all children, whether they are born or um, pre-born. So, uh, HB 896 would ensure that children are protected from the horrendous abuse of murdering innocent life. And I'd love to see Texas, which is the greatest state in this nation, hands down, to lead the country in true just justice and protection for the unborn children. So we have other states, such as Idaho, Washington State, Oklahoma, and Indiana, considering bills to abolish abortion as well. Texas can do better, and Texas ought to be leading the nation on this issue. So I urge you committee members to stand up and do your duty. Um, there will always be excuses and there will always be pressure to ignore justice. There are plenty of reasons to pass less controversial pro-life bills to make yourselves feel better and to ease our consciences. But at the end of the day, an estimated 55,000 babies will still be murdered every year in Texas. So don't let your fear of man and what uh, he will do to you keep you from defending the truth and enacting justice. Thank you all so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good job, buddy. Members, any questions? All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around with us. Too. All right. Chair calls Glenna Hodge. Did, did, were Sue, David, and Michael Sire here? Okay, they had to take off. Craig, Craig Siak. Lena Hodge, 
Sarah Witten. I'm going to call the whole Witten family up. Are they still here? There's four of them. Is that y'all? Okay. Sarah, Mariah, Seth, and Bethany Witten. just wanted to clarify what was stated earlier about um, increased mother mortality rates in nations abolishing abortion. And I just looked that up online in between sessions and um, it said the, that it showed that these numbers are completely misrepresented. Many of the countries where abortion is illegal have third world conditions. And several of those I checked rank at the bottom one third of the worst overall life expectancy rates. Ireland, which is an abolitionist country, which is not third world. Um, on the other hand, claimed that contrary to public report, it had remained a leader in maternity health care, sustained through their country's abolition of abortion. On the other hand, over 68,000 women die every year from unsafe abortions in countries around the world. Just a little fact check there. Um, I also stand before you today to be a voice for those who cannot speak for themselves. On this most basic tenet of freedom, on which our country was founded, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all. I plead with you to uphold this constitutional right to the unborn, remembering the supremacy law, that where the court has ignored the Constitution, we must ignore the court. We see this even in the little-known jurors' right to rule not guilty, contrary to the laws of the land, if they deem those laws to be unconstitutional. And